May 22nd is now in session. Just a reminder, please make sure your cell phones are off. And if you need to have a conversation, please take it outside of the room. In conformance with the open meeting law, I am informing you that this meeting is being live streamed. Just a reminder that if you're here to speak either in support or in opposition of the project, put your name and address on the, uh, on the record and tell us what your support or opposition is based on. Mr. Fortune. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the first order of business, the approval of the hearing minutes of April 10th, 2018 and April 24th of 2018. I need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the first uh, extensions, calling BOA 448640 for Norfolk Terrace. The companion cases BOA 448637 to 5A Norfolk Terrace, BOA 448639 Norfolk Terrace, and BOA 448638207 Norfolk Terrace. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Mr. Secretary, Madam Chair, members of the board, Joseph Feaster from the law firm of McKenzie & Associates, 183 State Street, Boston 02109. Please tell us why you're here. Well, I'm here to seek an extension. Uh, back in uh, on um, last year, this body gave an extension for this project from a from his grant of variances back in June of 2015, uh, as you have know that trying to get financing for these projects, also trying to get in since it's affordable project, trying to get on affordability funding of by the state and the city, uh, you're you're in queue, and there's a need for my <coughs> excuse me for my client to have an extension until um, next June in order to be able to, that would be a year from your last grant of an extension um, in order to complete their financing and get into construction of this project. Thank you, may I have a motion? To make a one year extension. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, you're Thank all you set. Thank you Calling the next case, <coughs> calling BOA 568-247, 1152 Bennington Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with a business address at 350 West Broadway in South Boston. Uh, Madam Chair, members, I'm covering today for my colleague, Attorney Richard Linz, whose project this is. This is a three-family development project in East Boston. It was approved by the board in June of 2016. Uh, the relief is scheduled to expire June 10th, 2018. Um, attorney Linz explained to me and details in his request letter to the board that his uh, client uh, has recently succeeded in securing financing, uh, but they're simply concerned about the permit uh, issuing before the expiration date on June 10th. I believe Attorney Linz requested a one-year extension in his letter to the board. Make a motion for a one-year extension. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, you're all set. Thank you. And the last case for extension calling BOA 430-682-71R Grampian Way. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the board. My name is Kevin Kerr. I'm an attorney with an address at 587 East Broadway in South Boston. And this, this matter uh, before the board involves a one-car garage at a residential property. Uh, since the approval, uh, original approval by the board. Uh, when was that? It was. This expired on 2017. And the initial approval was February 24, 2015. Since then, uh, so so the permit has essentially expired because did you come in for an extension in 2017 or not? The petitioner uh, did not. There were a couple of things going on that delayed the uh, construction. First of no, all, but, but the sure. permit essentially, for all intents and purposes, has expired. Uh, that's my understanding. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is, in, in essence, then, not an extension if it's expired. Okay. Um, so may I have a motion, please? Motion for denial. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm opposed. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Call, call, next two case, uh, call the next case on G-Card, calling BOA 819-529-48-62 Brookline Avenue. 
This is to build out a retail store, a new entryway level. The violations Article 32, Section 4. This is in the GCOD applicability. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair. Peter Walsh, Citywide Contracting. The proposed addition is a uh, approximately 110 square feet retail space in order to access the lower level retail. Uh, we're in the process of hiring an engineer and we'd like to defer a decision to uh, further time. That's okay. May I have a motion, please? Motion for deferral. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Um, any opposed? The date, please. July 31st. Please see July 31st at 11.30. Thank you very much. Calling the next case, calling BOA 820-987-175 Beacon Street. Yeah. All right. This is a renovation of seven units in a single family home. Violation, Article 32, Section 4, G card applicability. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address at 350 West Broadway in South Boston. Madam Chair, this is a GCOD only matter. Uh, I have in my possession, and I believe the board was uh, copied on this uh, letter from the Boston Water and Sewer Commission indicating uh, GCOD compliance with the project. We do have a letter. Christian? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Christian Simonelli, Groundwater Trust, and we do have the approval letter from Water and Sewer. Motion, please. Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank You're you. all set. Good luck. Calling the 930 hearings. Are there any deferrals or withdrawals for 930? Counselor, address, please. Yeah, just, uh, 1948 to 1950 Washington Street. For the Lake. record, but that, that's just that one? Yes. Okay. For the record, calling BOA 794 165 1948 to 1950 Washington Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Mr. Secretary, Madam Chair, members of the board. Joseph Feaster from the law firm McKenzie Associates, 183 State Street, Suite 6, Boston 02109. Uh, Madam Chair and members, I am before the board uh, because this is a situation whereby. Uh, we've been going through the Article 80 process, and most recently, the Board of, excuse me, the BPDA wanted to extend the time, or did extend the time, as to when this matter would go before their board. We originally thought that they would have been going, my client would have gone before the board of the uh, BPDA sometime this month. They moved that to June 12th. In speaking both with the representative Gary Webster and the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, they are in agreement, but we're looking at a date in, in all due deference to the schedule of this board, looking at to see if this matter can be deferred until June 26 because of financing considerations. This particular project is what I call in the gateway leading to Roxbury. This is in Lower Roxbury. It is across from where we've done uh, city, state, and others have put considerable uh, funds uh, the project, which is right on the projects on the corner of Melnie or Cass on Washington Street. This particular project is on Thorndike Street. It's a residential complex that is being proposed here. So if the board in its, in its wisdom would be able to give us the date of June 26, that would be much appreciated. May I have a motion, please? Motion to defer. Is there second. a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> The date, please. In our infinite wisdom, we are going to give you the date of 626. Oh, um, that was oh. compelling. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fortune, the members of the board. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 930? Hearing none, we'll call the first case, calling BOA 812 967 3215 Washington Street. This is a change of oxygen from a two family to a three family. The third unit at the attic floor and extend living space to the basement for unit one. Construct a new rear deck and rear addition with roof deck. The violations Article 55, Section 55 40. Off street parking is insufficient. Article 55, Section 9. Additional lot area is insufficient. Article 55, Section 9. The floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 55, Section 9. The building height is excessive in feet. Article 55, Section 9, the building height is excessive in stories. Article 55, Section 9, side yard is insufficient. 
Article 55, Section 9, rear yard is insufficient. And Article 55, Section 9, Usable open space is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Stephen Petipas of Aesthetic Images, 7 Stimson Street, Boston, Mass. Uh, we met extensively with the... Uh, about the proposal. Oh, sorry. Uh, the proposal is to convert a two-unit building into a three-unit building, extending living space into basement and attic space. To basement and attic? Okay. Um, you have a number of violations, so tell us what's required and what you're proposing. Sure. Um, the majority of the violations are due to the non-conforming uh, aspect of the property itself. Um, what we met extensively with so the... tell us what's the zoning district? Zoning district. 3F. It's a 3F? 3F. Okay. Yep, 3F, 4,000. Okay, and tell us about the floor to ceiling height in the basement. Oh, it's substantial. It's uh, over 8 feet in the basement. 8 feet plus, and what's the use of the space in the basement? Currently, it's just used for storage. And the proposed use? Uh, would be living space, uh, basically a bedroom and a playroom. A bedroom and what? Playroom. And playroom. And how many, um, and so, and where is the third unit? The third unit is located in the attic. Okay, what we used to be the attic. And how many square feet is that proposed to be? Uh, that's roughly a little more than a thousand square feet. And what's the floor to ceiling height in there? It's again that's substantial. The, the ridge is over 13, 14 feet, and we're doing two dormers on each side, two almost full length dormers. And that's where the height violation comes in. That's right. And how about the off street parking? What's required and what are you proposing? Currently, there is only one off-street parking, we've actually been able to manipulate the site to get an additional, so that we currently are proposing two. We're still short one. Two parking spaces? Mr. Bazzani, how are the plans? Plans are adequate. How are the, how's the parking looking? Is, is any of it front yard? No, it's not, it's not front yard. Any questions from the board? What, what's the square footage of the uh, it's around 1,000 square feet. If, if you let me look at the plan, I can actually give you an exact. And, and how many bedrooms in the entire building? Ah, uh, originally, it was a two-unit, two-bedroom building. We are proposing to do a four-bedroom unit in the first floor and basement and two three-unit, uh, two three-bedroom units in the second floor and attic. Mr. Pisani? So, uh, so, so that's 10, ten. ten bedrooms? In total, three three bedrooms and four two three bedrooms and one four bedroom. We is this, is this on owner occupied? No, it is not. Originally, we were going to do another bedroom off the back, but after talking with the local um, community group and with the uh, uh, Jamaica Plain Zoning Count Committee, we actually took that away. Okay, now do you, do you, one more question. <coughs> Back, getting back to the parking. Yes. Um, what is the actual length of the parking right from curb from property line back? Uh, because of the angle of the property just line, straight, just straight back. Straight back. Um, it would be 50 feet, 225 foot spots. How much? 50 feet, 50. 225 foot spots. I'm sorry, 20, two 20 foot spots would be 40 feet. I apologize. Okay, because what it does do to answer the previous query from the uh, Madam Chairperson, one of the car, how many cars are there now? I, currently I'm showing two. You're showing two, okay, but one of the cars really does pop out into the front. That's yard. correct, so that, it does. So the question comes about is, is it possible for you to push that back we, another, another five feet? We have two problems. Actually, you know. I, I think we could do it. I think we could do it. I think you're right. It I looks mean, to me if, if, if by that, we then could squeeze it in. Then the parking is clearly not any front yard. Okay. okay. So you'll do that. Yes, we will agree to do that. Yeah. Ms. Ms. are the utilities se separated? And is it possible for that basement to turn into another unit the way it's made out? Well, the, the issue is that the utilities are not separated from the basement unit that has been where the space has been extended from the first floor into the basement. But it can very easily be done. All, all they have to do is throw a door uh, at that point, um, and that would 
then give a private entrance into that space. Mm -hmm. so that, that can certainly be done. It's an unusual basement where the basement itself is actually up above the rear yard. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, John Allison, Mayor's Office at Neighborhood Services, on behalf of Alex Valdez, we'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Shannon Murphy from City Councilor Matt O'Malley's office, the council would like to go on record in support of this project. Madam Chair, members of the board, Councilor Sabi George goes on record in support. Anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to grant the zoning relief requested with the following proviso that the driveway will be extended approximately five to eight feet on the right side. And with design review? Uh, there's no real exterior work. There is two dormers no, being no, added. No. Are there two dormers being two, added? Yes, there's two dormers at the, at, on the right. attic level that's Where being added. With the BBDA design review. Is there a need for a motion on the utility room? No, because that should be picked up. That, that should be picked up when they go for building permit because ISD will take a look at it and say, could we go with it? Problem. Uh, so is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries with those provisos. Finally, next case, calling POA 787-215, 40 Crawford Street. This is a new deck off the second floor. The violations, Article 50, Section 29. The rear yard isn't sufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Clayton Palmer. I'm the owner, and it's my residence. And, tell, uh, tell us what you're proposing to do. I'm proposing to build a deck above um, my existing garage um, and uh, connect it with a bridge across from the house. Uh, reasoning. What's, what's the nearest cross street on Crawford? Uh, Elm Hill Avenue. Yeah, it's Elm right Hill. at the corner okay. of Crawford and Elm Hill. Okay. And um, the main reason I wish to do this is because my wife has lupus and we live off the second floor. It's kind of difficult for her to go up and down the steps all the time, particularly okay. if we want to have outdoor functions. Hold on. Um, have you seen the BRA's recommendation? Um, can you please give this to him? Sorry. Uh, how are the plans, Mr. The, Pisani? The drives are adequate. It's pretty simple. Um, because the BRA uh, thinks it's an oversized deck, so I just uh, wanted to know what the dimensions are on it. No, I mean, basically, the deck is infilling a little notch that's there and connecting straight across the garage. Yeah. Well, and what is the size of the deck proposed? Um, it is approximately um, 25 by 20. So it's it's be, above. It's twenty by thirteen. Yeah, it's it's a it's going to be above the uh, garage. The structure is already there. It's it's so it's I not really a, a new structure. I yeah. Uh, and any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Chair, members of the board, Joshua McFadden, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, would like to go on record and support. We had an on-site abutters meeting, and since then, the applicant has garnered um, two letters of support from his direct abutters. I also have some letters from. We can put my that abutters. in the record. Thank yeah. you. Is anybody else here to speak in support? Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Madam Chair, members of the board, Sina Bond from Councillor Kim Gaines' office. Um, we would like to go on the record in opposition to request for a more community process. Okay, thank you. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Thank you. Calling VOA 787 764 7 Abbotsford Road. This is the curb cut for two vehicles, violation of Article 10, Section 1. No parking is permitted within a five-foot buffer parallel to the side lot line within the side yard. Article 50, Section 43, off-street parking and loading. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair and fellow board members. My name is Maverick Afonso. I am the owner of 7 Abbotsford Street. Um, I'm here before you today to uh, 
asked for approval to reestablish a curb cut for my property. Uh, this curb cut was capped, uh, I believe it was 1995. The previous owner suggested that they didn't really need parking, um, and parking was not that bad on that street, so they decided to cap it when the street was being you know, redeveloped and the sidewalks as well. Um, Tell I, us about, is any of this parking in the front yard? No. Um, and I what's have, the width and depth of the, of the, of the driveway? The Close width driveway. is, um, well, so uh, the beginning of the driveway, I believe it's about 20 feet, but it narrows down to about 9 feet. Um, it goes back, I propose it to go back about like 36 feet or so. Okay. It All could right. go back further if need be. The, plans, Mr. the drawings are adequate. Uh, there is adequate scape, space from the side of the house to the property lines. The narrowest shrink point is at the bay, and that is where it's reduced down to nine and a half feet. So is that why the five-foot buffer is being um, is being cited? Probably. That's right. Okay. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Right in. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Joshua McFadden, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go on record in support as well. Um, we had an on-site abutters meeting, and since then, the applicant has um, got support um, and a petition from his direct abutters as well. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set to lock. Spelling BOA 802 862 29 Sagamore Street. The Sagamore Street here? Okay. This is a confirmed ex extending living space. The basement was finished in 2007. The violations of Article 9, Section 1. The proposed expansion to the basement is an extension from an existing non conforming three family and a two, two family subdistrict. Article 65, Section 9. The proposed expansion worsens the existing non conforming excessive FAR. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Mega Satya Narayana. The address is uh, 29 Sagamore Street. So tell us what's being proposed. Um, I'm trying to confirm the extended, uh, my basement as extended living space. The repairs um, were done before I bought the house. The process was not completed by the previous owner, and I'm here to complete it. So tell us, give us specifics about that uh, extension into the basement. Um, the basement was converted into a bedroom and bathroom area with um, a storage area uh, per the plans. Um, it has an exit that leads directly to the outside as well as the staircase that leads upstairs right to a door. Um, the work has already been completed. I've done nothing else to it. What's the floor to ceiling height in the basement? Um, I'd have to look it up, but. The drawing shows seven foot six. Okay. Um, okay. How are the plans, Mr. Bazzani? The drawings are adequate. I mean, it's a simple extension for a single family. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, of the board, Patrick Fandel, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We're here to speak on support of this bill. Yes. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McGeckern, City Councilor, Frank Baker's office. We'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Motion for approval. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Calling BOA 784-939, 41 Mount Everett Street. 41 Mount Everett, okay. This is off-street parking for six residential vehicles. The violations of Article 9, Section 1, extension of an existing non-conforming three-family and a two-family sub-district. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, my name is uh, Kurt Frazier. Uh, the address of the property is 41 Mount Everett Street. Tell us what's being proposed. Uh, we are proposing a uh, curb cut at 41 Mount Everett Street to allow for uh, six parking spaces in the rear of the, of the lot. Uh, this property is a, is a multifamily home. How many units? Uh, approximately three units. Three units. Three units. Okay. And um, how many bedrooms all together? All together, they are. Mm -hmm. 
uh, approximately, uh, I believe there's six bedrooms okay, all, so all together. Two bedroom, two bedroom units. Three bedrooms. So three bedrooms. So that's nine bedrooms all together. Okay. And this is six parking spaces in the rear. Mr. Bazzani, um, how are the plans? Uh, I'd like to consult with APDA on this. Uh, the issue is that it's a long, long lot. It's 38 feet wide at the front, but it narrows down to 22 feet in the rear. And a standard parking space is 20 feet deep. So when you pull in, right, it's a question of maneuverability. I, I would defer to the BPDA. BP, oh, BTD. That's okay. <laughs> Excuse me. There's actually no parking in that oh, section where it now is. Hold on, hold on. Uh, Bob Boston Transportation Department. Uh, looking at the plans, um, if uh, cars are parked on a 45 degree angle, they can fit four spaces. But that's about as many as you're going to fit in this particular lot because of its shape. But uh, the, all, all that's required is 29 feet in, in width if you park them on a 45 degree angle and then that way they can fit four spaces. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, any other comments? Is anybody here to speak in support of this project? To the board, John Ellison, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. On behalf of Flavio de Vega, we'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, John McGarrick City Council, and Frank Baker's office, we'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to grant parking relief for four spaces uh, and attach a proviso that we will not sign the signet, we will not sign the decision until you submit a drawing that shows four parking spaces at 45 degrees. Okay. okay. Second. All okay. those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set for that proviso. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling BOA 772-616, 6 Berry Street. This is a change of auction from a one to two family in addition to the existing residents and improvements. The violation of Article 80, Section 80E-2. This is a small project review in the end. Article 65, Section 9, the front yard setback requirement is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the rear yard setback requirement is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, George Bragle, uh, 885 Crabtree Road, Quincy. I'm his grandson, Michael Bragel. So put your name and address on the record and please speak up so I can hear you. My name is Michael Bragel, 85 Crabtree Road, Quincy, Mass. Okay, so tell us what's being proposed. We're proposing to change the occupancy from a single family to a two family. Okay. <laughs> and how is that, um, that uh, change uh, projected to occur? Well, we're going to tear down the garage in the front to put three parking spaces, and we need an 18-foot <coughs> fire lane, and we're also going to cut the top off and square up the building and add a second floor. So adding a second floor, demolishing the garage to accommodate the yep. access. And then there's two small, a very small addition in the back side of the house. You could see it on the plans there, the foundation plan. Which plan should I be looking at? The foundation plan. Okay, I see that. It's a six, six, 10 by 6, okay? And how many bedrooms? Uh, it's going to be three bedrooms and three bedrooms, I believe. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Pisani? The drawings are adequate. There were three bedrooms per unit. Does this appear to be like a, a flag locked? Is it that is, what it is? It is landlocked. Uh, I, yeah. So if I'm looking at this cover site plan, yeah. How, how would somebody access the building by vehicle? Off of Lorenzo? Yes, right and now. Is, and this is a Berry, uh, a street address? It's mm -hmm. 6 Berry Street. Right now, there's, uh, you would access it from Berry Street. There's an eight foot passageway between other two houses. Okay. And it's like almost always blocked. Okay. So we're just gonna access it from Lorenzo Street. And we, like I said, we have a garage and a driveway okay. already there. I see. Any 
questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Patrick Fandel, Mayor's of Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, we're here to go on record in support of this project. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Do we need BPDA, Jeff? For the yeah, we, yeah, the we should. Yeah. So we'll approve it with um, BPDA design review. There a second? second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Calling the next case, calling BOA 790-727-59 Lonsdale Street. This is a full renovation to a three-family dwelling, which was damaged during fire. Violations of Article 65, Section 9, the fluidity ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the building height is excessive. Adding dormers creates a new third full story. And Article 65, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. 59 Lonsdale Street. Okay. James McCabe. Okay. Tell us what you're proposing to do. Well, it's an existing three family and had a fire a year ago, March. What we would like to do is uh, extend the dormers that are existing for more head height for an A-frame three-family home. And, and the, how many bedrooms will be in that there's unit? Two, there's two bedrooms per floor, so there'll be a total of six. Six bedrooms in that uh, dwelling. Yes. In that dwelling. Yes. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Bazaar? The drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? S who's here to speak in support? Patrick Vandell, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, we're here to go on record in support of this project. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Council, Frank Baker's office would like to go on record in support. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, members of the board, Councilor Sabi George would like to go on record in support. Madam Chair, members of the board, Dustin Garden representing District 4, Council President Andrea Campbell's office, we'd like to go on record of support. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Please put your name and address on the record and tell us why you're opposed. My name is Brianda Thompson. Uh, the address is 65 Lonsdale Street, which is right next door, uh -huh. um, which was my mother's property, which she just recently passed away, and I received this letter. And according to this letter, it's saying that a lot of stuff is excessive, and I'm not really, you know, sure I can bring the letter to you to show you if you yes, like. Yes, we have it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm not really sure. Um, in other words, when they build what they're building, it's going to be, like, higher than our building next door and blocking off anything or whatever? is that after we we make a decision here, mm -hmm. that you have a conversation with the applicants so that you are fully comfortable with what they're proposing. Okay? okay? So as right now, though, is any decisions going to be made? Yes, there will be a decision made. For or against? We don't know yet. Okay. We are, we are here receiving testimony, and basically, you're, you're basically saying that you're not sure exactly what's happening. Right. Okay? And according to this, I guess this has been here before? In I this, don't think uh, so. No? no. I, have, okay. I don't remember seeing this case before. Okay, because, uh, well, <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm not understanding everything. Okay. But according to this letter, okay, it's... hold so on. Give me, hold on one minute. I think it might be worth you uh, just having a 10-minute conversation with your abutter sure. before we make a decision. Yeah. In the meantime, we will go ahead with the next case. Okay? Thank you. Calling the next case is a companion case as well. BOA 814-696-48 West Tremlett Street. BOA 814-697-50 West Tremlett Street. This is for 48 West Tremlett. This is erecting a new two-family dwelling on an existing vacant lot. Proposed three off street parking. <coughs> the violations of Article 65, Section 9, insufficient lot size. Article 65. Section 9, insufficient lot width. Article 65, Section 9, insufficient lot frontage. And Article 65, excessive FAR. This is for 50 West Tremlett. Erect a new two-family dwelling and an existing vacant land. Proposed three off-street parking. 
the violations, Article 65, insufficient lot size, Article 65, Section 9, insufficient lot width, Article 65, insufficient lot width frontage, Article 65, Section 9, insufficient side yard setback, and Article 65, Section 9, excessive FAR. Name and address for the record, please. Yeah, my name is Patrick Dowd of 10 Gray Terrace, Braintree, 02184. And Patrick is the owner, and I'm Ahmed Nur, uh, Nur Construction and Permitting at Two Sedgwick Week Road. Good morning, Madam Chair and uh, me honorable members. Um, we appeared here before, and this project when was a- When was that? Last month. When was this before us? This was before you, I don't recall the date, about two months ago. We came back for an extension, and unfortunately, the permit that you've approved that expired, um, and you've asked, uh, okay. The owner, what? I remember this. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, so this is a request to erect two, two, two family dwellings. Correct. And tell us about the parking, because uh, I don't understand who the BWS is. Because uh, the, the applicant says, but BWS and curb cut too, too, took too long before approvals. Um, yes. Yeah, so I. Unfortunately, the project uh, architect is not here. Patrick tells me there is six parking spaces. Do you, can you answer the question about the? Yeah, there's six parking spaces. Well, what, what they're basically doing is there are two units side by side. Correct. And they're splitting the driveway between the, the, two, uh, the two units. Three parking on one lot and three spaces on the other. They have, they'll have a common driveway shared. So has this been registered at the Registry of Deeds, this shared driveway? Has it been registered at the Registry of Deeds? I would suggest it hasn't, uh, because what you also have to do is move the curb cut. That it, there's an existing curb cut now. Right? Right. You have to move that right. so it's centered on two lots. I, no, I understand, but may I just, just remind you, you might already know this, but just for my own thing, that. This has already gone through you. I totally and, understand, but the okay. fact of the matter is if it's gone through us before already, and it, I'm sure that this thing about uh, a shared driveway, there's got to be protections for the eventual owners if, should it change hands. And so we need to make sure that you've had, the applicant has had two years to get it registered and do whatever they need to do, and it hasn't happened. You know, I, so, so that, that, you know, um, makes us a little bit uh, worry. I understand. So. Uh, the, the, not, to, not to cut you off, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the project engineer who had an emergency today that was supposed to be here would have probably known Tom Rivera, and I'm almost certain that he told me everything was fine. The only thing, Boston and Water Sewer took a very long time, as well as curb cut, and that's why it expired. By the time they went to 1010 Mass Avenue to pull the permit, They've told them, unfortunately, this is a 2015, and therefore you'd have to go back. So we came okay. in front of you just for an extension, and uh, and it expired. So yeah, and expired. Okay. That was the only reason. Okay, so <coughs> the, but also though, to be fair. Yes, indeed. The Boston Water and Sewer drawing that you presented with your documents shows still shows the old curb cut in its former location. So at some point, you have to do a drawing that shows the. I could, I could submit that. I believe that there is one that took almost a six, eight months for them to approve, and I'm sure if they haven't submitted that, that we could resubmit that if need to, to be. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair. Members of the board, Flavio de Vega, Mayor's Office, Neighborhood Services. The applicant has support from the abutters and the community. We'll go on record in support. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? We're going to make a motion to approve with um, with the driveway being moved and that the the two the the the, the driveway is registered as <clears throat> as um, at the registry at the registry as a common driveway and and with BRA design review. Yes. All those. In, is there a second? Second. Right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, but there's some work that you need to do. Thank you very much. Okay. Very much. Calling BOA 685-921, 8 to 10 Loring Place. 
This is to erect a new two-family residential building with garage parking on grade. Violations Article 69, Section 29, off-street parking is insufficient. Article 69, Section 8, the two-family dwelling is forbidden. Article 69, Section 9, the lot area is insufficient. Article 69, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 69, Section 9, the height is excessive. Article 69, Section 9, usable open space is insufficient. Article 69, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. And Article 69, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Madam Chair, members of the board, Daniel Toscano from Dragon Toscano, attorney at law, located at 15 Broad Street, Boston, Mass, 02109. I'm here representing the owner of uh, 8 to 10 Loring Place. To my immediate <coughs> left is Adler Bernadine, who's one of the owners of the property. To my right is James Chris Christopher, representing RCA architecture firms who conducted the drawings. Today, we're seeking your approval to erect a two-family dwelling on an empty lot in the High Park area. This uh, lot is a 1F6000. Um, and Right now, the, the lot size is 4,200 uh, square feet, so we have an insufficient lot size. We want to erect a two-family. I'll go over some of the, uh, we've made some changes to the plans since the last one, so you see in your packet. So we address some of the violations um, based on numerous uh, meetings with our abutters. So I'll go over the, um, the violations, and then we'll go over the floor plan if that's okay with the board. So the off-street parking, we, although I believe it's still a violation, so under the new plan, uh, the old plan, we had one parking spot per unit. We're required to have two parking spots per unit. So we um, pushed the home back um, about 25 feet, and we added uh, tandem parking spots. So we are putting in four parking spots, two um, for each unit, and which will be on the side of the residence. So although I believe we meet the requirement of having the two parking spots per unit, I believe the maneuverability is still maybe a violation of that. Uh, so we are seeking relief. Uh, the use regulations, this is, a, like I said, this is a 1F6000 uh, uh, subdistrict. Uh, we are proposing a two-family um, and a 4,200-square-foot uh, lot. As you can see in the back pages of the second to the last page of your packet and to the last page of your packet, it shows uh, some of your di direct abutters that have uh, similar or smaller size lots that have uh, two-family or three-family. And in the back pa uh, page of your packet, everything outlined in yellow, the orange would represent eight to ten luring uh, place, and the yellow is, is uh, two or three family uh, residential dwellings in that particular area. So having a two family is not out of character in this particular area. The lot, uh, we went over the lot area insufficient. The floor area ratio, uh, we did have a violation under the original plans. Under the new plans, we, we are in compliance. We are at the requirement is 0.5. We are at 0.5 um, FAR ratio. So meeting with the abutters, we did make the uh, the unit and the home smaller, so we compliance with that um, violation. The height excessive. Um, we were um, over about three feet on the original plans. We've taken the house down, so we are. It's a 35 foot height uh, limit, two and a half stories. We did take it down, so we are in compliance with the uh, the regulations of the height. The open usable space it requires uh, 1,800 square feet of open space per unit, which is a total of 3,600 square feet. We are proposing over 2,300 square feet of open space. Although we're not at that 3,600, we are providing significant open space uh, for the two residential units. The front yard insufficient. The original plans had the uh, proposed home that we were in violation. I still think we are in violation, but we did push the house back um, 25 feet, which is the requirement according to the zoning. However, how does it, how does it compare to modal on that? I modal, how does it compare? It's 25 feet. How does that compare to modal front yard? To the front, how does it compare to the, to the modal of the rest of the houses um, on the street? Is I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Christopher. Okay. So in the meantime, continue. So, so we are, I believe we're in violation because the front of the home has a, a four-foot um, front bow pat patio um, for additional open space. So I believe that patio would be, be a violation because the structure is coming out about uh, 21 feet, but to the home is 25 feet. The rear yard insufficient is, is 40. We are, since we pushed the home back, we are only at 13 uh, feet to the back of the, the abutting property, which is owned by um, Mr. Adler and his, his partner. Was um, this project 
uh, before this board this in the This project was not the project that was before this board. It was Garfield Street, this 38 Garfield, which is directly behind this project. Um, it was the same owner in, um, of the two properties. However, the, the owner that I represented um, sold the property to, to Mr. Um, Bernardine and, and his partner. So we've already gone through Garfield um, pro proposal, which was to confirm it as a two-family residential dwelling. And now um, the new owners are going forward with the, the same plans that um, the prior owner had, so more in place. What are the plans, Mr. Pisani? The drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? I do have one. Um, James, can the driveway be pushed back more? Because if you really do two cars, you end up with... Uh, certainly, there's, there's absolutely space to extend the driveway towards the rear of the property. The, the trade-off, Mr. Pisani, was the open space. And also, you're going to require two curb cuts, right? Correct. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? I live in uh, New Acre Ward. It's about uh, 900 feet from the property. I'm sorry, what's your address? 3 New Acre Road, High Park. Okay. Uh, the property was a two family house. They changed it from two to one family, four bedroom. And uh, they plan to build the second house to compensate what they lose. I support it because I believe it will improve the value of property in the area. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Is anybody else to speak in support? Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Uh, may I have the representatives of elected officials speaking first? Uh, members of the board, Brian Flynn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, go, want to go on record in opposition of this proposal at this time um, due to the size. Um, I do also want to say that the uh, attorney and the developers were excellent with working with the community on this project. Uh, they did go back, relook at it, and uh, were able to eliminate some of the variances, uh, which is great, but we uh, still have to oppose it at this time. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Walter Applewhite, District 5, Councilor Tim McCarthy's office. For the same reasons as the mayor's office, uh, the density of the project at this time, we can't support it. Good morning, members of the board. Um, I'm actually in a butter uh, directly across the what's street. What's your name and what's your address, please? Hamidi Perez. My address is 11 Loring Place in High Park. Uh, my house is directly across the street from the backyard of 38 Garfield, which I eat to 10 Loring Place was a part of for the last 17 years that I've lived in High Park. Um, when the uh, lady had passed away, the original one family that was on 38 Garfield Ave, she lived with her son. Uh, it was sold separately, and the gentleman had bought it um, from somebody. Um, piece by piece. So the backyard is actually 8 to 10 Loring Place. Um, we actually just did construction on 11 Loring Place, which we abided by all of the rules. Uh, we did not have to go to the appeal board. We have 10,000 square feet. Our house would directly, um, all the kids' bedrooms would be blocked. Um, the space that they're proposing to put this two family with two garages is is not a sufficient size at all. Uh, the garages will come right out to the front of our yard. The 25 feet to go in front of the yard, there's not enough area for that so, either. Sorry, so you, yours is a single family dwelling yes. and the address is 11 again? Loring Place. 11 Loring, okay, thank you. Your name and address, and please give us new information. Yes, uh, morning, uh, Chairman, Madam, and members of the board. My name is uh, Javier Perez. I also live at uh, 11 Loring Place. Um, and just if we can uh, go on record, too, for the proposal, it says to erect a new family. Uh, they're proposing a uh, two family. Yeah. Uh, it says new, a, a new family residential building, which they are proposing a two family. 
which I don't know how they get away by saying two family because in actuality it's. So what is your opposition based on? Because they've made it very clear in their presentation that this yeah, is. Well, in opposition, it's, a new it's, it, it exceeds it exceeds all the uh, all the zoning. There's nine violations. Um, it exceeds the uh, the back. Um, because they are uh, owners of the uh, the rear property, they are they are trying to get away with, um, you know, um, probably going into the other um, uh, to the other person's uh, property also. But which which they uh, are owners of it. Um, it is uh, definitely um, too big. Uh, the violations are clear. Um, the uh, setback is not. It doesn't. Um, it's not uniform with the uh, with that street um, on the private way, ma'am. I just hope this isn't uh, going on. Any deaf ears, ma'am? And the, uh, I just want to go on record too that the uh, the uh, designer uh, is of the uh, of designing company is the inspector of inspectional services. He was a co-founder of that, and his son, which is presently here, he is uh, his son. So I just hope there's no influence there, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Now, counselor, let me ask you a question. Um, so you can have a seat. Um, tell us about the abutters directly on both sides, because these the the couple that's here in opposition is across the street. So tell us about the abutters around the direct abutters. So the direct abutters, as you heard from uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Perez, they are at 11 Loring Place, which is directly across the street. They have a single family, and they've been expressed their opposition from the beginning, even when we were proposing Garfield, which. Um, we, we did our best to try to work with them, so, try to, so, so but directly around has yeah. um, myself, along with uh, Matt Echo, my law associate, went around the area and we, we looked at some of the parcels and there's a majority of the uh, two, two families. But are, are the abutters, a, what, are, what are the abutters' opinions, They're direct abutters on either side and in the rear? There's one directly to our right is a smaller, it's a two family, it's a smaller lot, uh, very, it's, very similar home directly behind us, uh, which is 8 Garfield, which was confirmed, 38 Garfield, which was confirmed as a two family. If you're looking at 38 Matt. Garfield to the to our left, there's, there's also a two family, which is smaller size lot. So our direct abutters all have, as you can see from the second to last page of your packet, um, all a two family or three families with smaller size lots. We are uh, 4,200 square feet. The unit size is a 900, 975 square feet unit size. Uh, storage in the basement, so adequate uh, unit size for the uh, okay. in that Thank area, you. and it fits the character. Right. I, Madam Chair, I don't know, Mr. Bernadine might want something to add, if that's okay. Anything to add? Hi, uh, Madam Chair, we have spoken to the uh, direct abutters to our right. Uh, uh, one of our abutters is Mr. Sebastian, and he has no opposition, but he, he does not want to go on record because of um, the neighbor that just spoke. And to our left, uh, uh, our abutter, Mr. Ian, does not have opposition either. We have, we have been working with them very closely with the property that we're renovating at 38 Garfield um, and keeping them informed about this property as well. And there has not been any uh, opposition. Okay. So given all this information, may I have a motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm opposed. Two opposes. I, will, I, I vote with the motion. And this Madam is going to be with design review. Madam Chair, members of the board, thank you. Thank you. Can we get the folks from uh, Lonsdale Street back up to the table, please? Yeah, I'll put it back into the record. Calling BOA 790-727-59 Lonsdale Street. Uh, Name and address for the record, please. James McCabe, 59 Lonsdale Street. Thank you. Um, so uh, tell us, tell us, ma'am, you had a conversation. Yes, ma'am. Do you have a level of comfort then with what's happening? You understand? Yes, ma'am. She, um, Both of them has explained to me oh. um, and showed me their plans. And I do feel more comfortable. Excellent. Um, it's just that when I received the letter, I wasn't understanding a lot of stuff. But she, both of them showed me their plans and explained to me that it's not going to interfere with my property on the other side of them. So 
I feel comfortable. Oh, good. Yes, ma'am. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve with continued BPDA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Joke. Motion carries. You're all set. It's a real joke. Good luck. It's a real joke. Good luck. Okay. Calling the next case, calling BOA 821035, 34 Colgate Road. This is an existing vacant parcel to newly erect a new three family dwelling. The violations Article 10, Section 1, accessory, maximum allowed exceeded 25%, limitation of parking areas. Article 67, Section 32, off street parking and loading, maneuverability and design. Article 67, Section 30, Screening and buffering, none is proposed. Article 67, Section 32, off street parking, insufficient parking, two spaces, unit is required. Article 67, Section 8, a forbidden three family in a two F subdistrict. Article 67, Section 9, insufficient minimal lot size, 5,000 square feet is required. Article 67, Section 9, insufficient additional lot area unit, 11,000 square foot total is required. Article 67, Section 9, in, insufficient minimal lot width, 50 feet is required. Article 67, Section 9, insufficient minimal lot width frontage, 50 feet is required. Article 67, Section, section 9, excessive FAR, 0.5 is the max. Article 67, Section 9, number of allowed stories is exceeded, 2.5 feet is the max. Article 67, Section 9, maximum allowed height is exceeded, 35 feet is the max. Article 67, Section 9, insufficient open space, 1,750 unit is required. And Article 67, Section 9, insufficient side yard setback, 10 feet is required. Name and address for the record, please. Joseph Lozella, 3841 Washington Street, in Rosendale. So please tell us what's being proposed. I'm here on an application to build a three-family house on an existing vacant lot that my family has owned for 62 years. Has this been before us in the past? For a completely different application, it's yes. A different application, okay. So tell us, so tell us first what's your, what you're proposing. Proposing a three family house on this lot, which is consistent in size and shape with other lots in the neighborhood, part of the subdivision from 1916. The three family we're proposing is similar in terms of size and appearance with the other three family houses on Colgate Road. We did have a community meeting that went well. We heard no opposition in that meeting. Um, let's, uh, uh, let me turn it over to Mr. Fortune. Thank you, Madam Chair. Calling the first case for 1030, calling BOA 814-977-72 Washington Street. This is a gut renovation of an existing three family dwelling, a demolition of an existing three bay garage, construct a, new, a three story addition to replace the garage. The new addition to have three garage spaces, extend living space to the basement for unit one, construct a roof deck. The violation of Article 62, Section 25, roof structure restrictions, an open roof deck may be erected on the main roof of the building provided the access is by a roof hatch or a bulkhead, no more than 30 inches in height above such deck. The violation Article 62, Section 8, Floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 62, Section 8, the building height is excessive in feet. Article 62, Section 8, usable open space is insufficient. Article 62, Section 8, side yard is insufficient. Article 62, Section 8, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with a business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston. I'm joined by, to my right, the project architect, Timothy Burke, and to Tim's right, uh, Michael Davis, who is the petitioner. Uh, Madam Chair, members, this is an application to gut renovate an existing three-family dwelling. It's at 72 Washington Street, uh, which is at the corner of Union Street. It's on the part of Washington Street in Charlestown that dead ends uh, just before Austin Street. Uh, the uh, proposal here is to take the existing three-family, as I say, gut renovated, to the uh, side of the existing building uh, facing uh, uh, both Washington Street and it's a corner structure. Uh, facing um, uh, Union Street is a three-car garage, a single-story concrete block structure. That would be demolished. Uh, there would be, uh, it, would, it was essentially a side addition here, not a rear addition, but a side addition to the existing building to increase living space uh, on the uh, footprint, essentially the footprint of the existing garage structure. The result... What is that 
footprint? What's the size of that footprint? Uh, the footprint of the garage structure. Uh, Tim may know that. That's okay. um, the um, say. Um, I don't know exactly. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Morenci. While uh, okay, so the um, uh, the result is that the uh, renovated, newly renovated building, as extended. Uh, we continue to have uh, three units. Uh, unit one would be a basement and first floor duplex. The basement has an eight-foot ceiling height. That would be a three-bedroom unit of 2,060 square feet. Unit two would be a 1,950 square foot four-bedroom unit. Unit three would be a 2,235 square foot four-bedroom unit. The building would become fully sprinklered. The um, garage spaces will essentially be rebuilt. Uh, they will. Uh, between the basement and the first floor, there will actually be a lift system. So the parking for the building will be increased from the existing three spaces to two spaces per unit. So there will be a total of six spaces for the three units. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the violation letter, there's a citation for roof structure restrictions. I do want to point out with respect to the head house that is shown on the plans, that is an existing head house that is remaining, that is not a new proposed head house. Deck yes, the there, there, there will be a deck on the roof, and that's for the exclusive use of Unit 3 accessed by the head house. The um, floor area ratio resulting FAR here would be 2.6 versus a maximum of 2 for the district. This is a 3F2000 zoning district. Where is it now, Councilor? Uh, it's uh, currently um, 1.7. 1 1.7. The, uh, there's a, a violation here for excessive building height. Uh, the, uh, this is a three-story, 35-foot district. The height of the existing building is 35 and a half feet. So the existing building is half a foot out of compliance. The addition, obviously, is matching the existing, hence the citation for, um, for building height. There's a, a, a citation for insufficient usable open space, which I would posit is incorrect. Uh, no usable open space here is being uh, removed. There is no yard area. This is, in fact, a garage structure. There's no deck. There's no usable open space above the garage. There's no change of occupancy. Uh, therefore, there is no diminishment of any existing usable open space. In fact, all that's happening here is an increase in open space because of the roof deck. Uh, finally, there's a, a side yard and a rear yard insufficiency cited. Uh, with respect to the side yard uh, insufficiently, insufficiency, and I pointed out earlier that this is a, a corner lot. Yeah. So the side lot uh, line of a corner lot is effectively a front lot line for setback purposes. There are two buildings on the block in question on that side of Austin Street, which means that rather than what would normally be the applied side yard uh, setback requirement, you have a modal front yard requirement on the Austin Street side. I can understand why it was cited, but I believe that the code exempts this building because of its situation uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the actual uh, side yard setback requirements. And finally, there's a rear yard insufficiency, uh, and this is once again an existing condition. Um, uh, the rear yard setback requirement here is 10 feet. Uh, as you can see on the plans, on Tim's plans on sheet A1.1, uh, for approximately 80% of the width uh, of the uh, side addition in the rear, there's a 9-foot setback. And the reason why it can't simply just be made 10 feet is because the, 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 all the space is required to be able to accommodate the three side-by-side -side vehicles. Uh, there is a small notch that is 1.17 feet off the rear lot line. But again, 80% 80, 80 of the addition is substantially uh, in conformance with the required rear yard setback. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Oh, yeah. go ahead, Mr. Mr. Just, uh, oh, I, mean, I don't have a place in front of me, but you, you're going up above the garage of the three story. Is, will there be penetration through the existing? Is it all going to be brought together, or is it separate? The garages are kept separate. There is one door. There will be a fire rated door. Are we talking about the existing building? The existing garage? building. The existing building. The existing building will not be connected to the garage directly. It'll go over the new the new part will go over the garages. So, so there will be a punch through once you're all done. Yes. On the lower on the lowest level. Only one, only one building. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry, is anybody here to speak in support? Chair, Madam Chair, members of the board, Christopher Breen from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services would like to speak in support. 
Uh, the applicant, uh, host, we hosted a meeting for the applicant on about a month ago. Uh, there were about five or six people there that also spoke in support. A few people have reached out recently and the applicant has met with them and he's pledged to continue to work with them. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Klaus Sullivan, on behalf of the Council of Medical Clarity, Council of Going Record and Support. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Please put your name and address on the record. Uh, my name is David Yashar. I live at 41 Union Street, which I own with my wife, Emma. I live diagonally across. I actually have, uh, there were letters submitted this morning to the board from Nate Blanchett. I don't know if they made it to you. I have copies. Will you sum summarize what your opposition is based on? Yes, um, I live diagonally across from this uh, building and we generally are in support of its overall development. Our main concern specifically to our house is that there is shadow impact to our house and we don't feel that the developer I know is working. We've met with the developer but has fully given us an understanding of how those shadows will now affect our front yard. Um, both Nate Blanchett and myself are particularly concerned that the building is massive and out of character for the neighborhood. If you look at the bit neighbor, the um, area around the house, you'll see that the typical frontage for a, a, a house in that area is 24 feet in length. Pretty much all the surrounding houses, the longest building in the entire two blocks of Washington Street is about 45 street, 45 feet. This building would essentially now be 60 feet in length with one, uh, with one door uh, to look at it. It is out of character for the neighborhood and its uh, footprint. Um, we do have concern essentially as well with the stackers for the garage and it isn't necessarily that the amount of cars there, it's that by putting the stackers in, essentially the first floor looks like it will be greater in height than it, the typical first floors of any other uh, dwelling on the street. So essentially that also adds to the this essence of this uh, building being out of character for the neighborhood. Uh, it's not in character, it, you know, the, we've had discussions with the developer about maybe having some decorative windows, but as it stands right now, it would be essentially be a monolithic building that does not form to the, form to the, um, to the community. Um, and as I said, we have seen shadow impact studies and essentially, as we understand, we will be losing about four to five months of sun at particular times of day on our front yard. Thank you. Uh, I'll yes, thank you, please. Um, Councillor, can you please address the massing and the stacking height? So I'll, 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 I'll just say, uh, I'll turn this over to Tim to talk about his design. I mean, obviously this would go through design review. I think Tim has actually done a good job in terms of sort of distinguishing between the existing building and the new addition to give it less of an appearance of being one structure. But I'll let Tim talk about uh, his design concept for this. Uh, with respect to um, the, uh, the shadowing, I do have to say, and, and uh, I've been advised by my client and Tim that a shadow study was done, even though, as I say, this building is six inches uh, above uh, the uh, the allowable height for the district so but I do want to let Tim talk about uh, his talk design about how um, how how you're breaking the the building up so it appears less monolithic yes we are um, continuing the existing stone foundation there's a granite foundation it's quite nice so we're bringing that along the band and we talked with the neighbor about putting in some blind openings to give it some uh, modulation and then the siding would be uh, continuous. We'd probably be using hardy plank. We'd work with the BPDA on the detailing of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. The, um, we have the room for the stackers because of the hill on Union Street. It drops down quite a bit. So we have some extra height, and that's why we took advantage of that. But the second floor is all one level uh, above there. So it was a nice way to hide the, the mass of the cars. And we've used some small um, roofs and transom lights to help break up the facade. Yeah, and the window sill levels are consistent with adjoining buildings, so that even though there may be a floor height difference, it will still read as a consistent. And we're continuing the existing sill. head heights and sill okay. heights, Great. yes. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Motion to grant the relief requested with BPDA design review. Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And please keep in conversation with your abutter. Yes, sir. Okay? Thank you. Following the next case, calling POA 820 340 233 Beacon Street. This is a change of occupants from 11 residential units in one room to 12 residential units. All existing conditions, no work to be done. The violation of Article 13, Section 1, usable open space is insufficient. And Article 23, Section 1, off street parking is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with an address of 15 Broad Street. Uh, representing Mr. Andy Constantine, uh, and I also have, who's the owner of the property, and Arthur Chu, um, who's the architect in the property. Um, Mr. Constantine purchased this building, uh, and it was zoned as 11 residential units and a room. Uh, that particular zone where the where mentioned room is actually a, a, a unit in the building that was pre-existing. It's a 406 square foot unit, um, and it's in the uh, first floor rear. Um, I provided uh, part of the building docket that just actually highlights where it mentions oh, that unit. Not the unit itself, yep. though. So it's a, it's a 406 square foot unit. It is occupied currently, so it's one bedroom, um, kitchen, living room. Um, in the building itself, uh, and it's on the first floor. It has separate meters, separate utilities. Um, somewhere along the line, it was just never zoned properly. It was in the family, it was a family building uh, since before the 20s, I believe. And Mr. Constantine bought it and wanted to legalize it properly. We're also planning on sprinkling the entire building now. So this is shown as unit number two? No, it's unit number four on the plans. It's a 406 square foot yeah. unit. Councilor, one, one of the concerns that we had when we did the plans preview, there was no definition as to which unit was being requested. Mm -hmm. And uh, this building is unique in a negative sense in that it has 213 square foot dwelling units. But if they are already there and have been there, then uh, that was the issue. Our, our concern was that it was that unit that was being requested. Correct. So all of those units that you mentioned, uh, Mr. Bazzani, that are 200 or 275 feet are pre-existing and already legalized. Right. And we actually highlight unit uh, number four, and we can even add a proviso that we are only legalizing unit number okay. four as well. That, that would be helpful for the board. Thank you. I, I'm sorry, what did you just say? You can, uh... We could, if the board would want to add a proviso that we specifically are only legalizing unit number four. Every other unit is legalized already. So the occupancy for this building is um, going back to 1955, and it's for how many units? 11 units in one room. And the one room is mentioned specifically as the first floor rear is where that room is located, which is actually an apartment, a 406 square foot unit that's existing. It has been rented. Okay. And, the, and all egress requirements are being met? They have. Okay. Um, how are the plans designed? No, the, the, the plans are very good, uh, and it's because they are very good that it raised the yep. issue. Uh, an issue. Um, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Giselle Guerrero with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I would like to go on record in support in support. Um, we did have an abutters meeting where a couple of abutters came out, but there were no outstanding questions or concerns, and everyone was very happy that the building would be restored back to its historical purpose. So, thank you. I'm chairman of the Board Elliott Laffer Neighborhood Association of Back Bay. Uh, we are not opposed to this uh, change in designation, not a change in use. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Motion for approval. Second. And, and this is limited to unit number four? And which is limited to unit number four with square footage of 406 square feet. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Thank you very much. Calling the next case, calling BOA 816-428-182 West 7th Street. Thank you. 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 This is a full interior renovation of an existing three-family dwelling and replaced existing siding, roof, and rear deck. Construct a new exterior egress stairs. The violation of Article 27S, 
Dash five, it's in the iPod applicability, and Article 68, Section 8, side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Barry Costello, 182 West 7. John McGinn, 275 Old Colony, South Boston. Uh, just an interior, interior renovation with the siding, um, no additional square footage. What was the occupancy and what is the occupancy going to be? Uh, three and three, no change in three occupancy. Three and how many bedrooms? Uh, 221. Two, two, one. So, one. yes. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Pisani? The drawings are adequate. Okay. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? The board, John Allison, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on record in support. We did hold an abutters meeting on the project, and there were no objections raised. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next case, calling BOA 794-792-92G Street. This is a change of oxy from a three-family to a four-family, an additional unit in basement, and construct a fourth floor addition. This is a full renovation. Violations of Article 68, Section 27S-5, it's in the iPod applicability. Article 68, Section 29, roof structure restrictions. Article 68, Section 33, off-street parking and loading requirements. Off-street parking is insufficient. Article 68, Section 8, the floor to air ratio is excessive. And Article 68, Section 8, building height is excessive. And Article 68, Section 8, side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Madam Chair, members of the board, my name is Dan Toscano from Madrego and Toscano Attorneys at Law, located at 15 Broad Street, Suite 610 in Boston, Mass, 02109. I represent Al Cantal, who's on my far right, who's the owner of 92 G Street, located in South Boston. To my immediate right is Peter Vanco, who's the architect from Vanco Studios, who conducted the plans. We're seeking your approval to uh, change the legal occupancy of this residential property from a three-family to a four-family residential just district. Just quickly for clarification on this front cover, is okay. this central building the... It's the smaller that's, one. That's yes. That one. That's and then your second page, when you flip over, it's the one towards the right. Oh, okay. The, oh. okay. So, so um, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So um, when we filed this, we did um, have some violations. Uh, so we have gutted out the building, so we are... Um, uh, completely renovating the units um, and making them larger bed bedroom sizes, but the floor area ratio is excessive. Uh, the current zoning code is uh, 2.0. We are currently in violation anywhere about 2.2, uh, where with the increase in the floor area ratio to 2.54. So we're going up a little bit because um, we're adding that one-story addition uh, for that for the property. The height of the the zoning code is, is 40 feet. We are going up to 42 feet. Uh, we're asking a request for an additional two feet, which will be in line with um, number 90 um, G Street and number 88 G Street. If you can look um, on your front page and also on your your second page. And then there's the aerial view of on your third page, which will be the exact height of um, 90 and 88 at 42. It's gonna be identical to um, what what they uh, have done. Um, the side yard insufficient is three feet on each side. We are at the property. We, we, there is no, it's a pre-existing violation and we, we're not. So can you give us please the unit breakdown? The unit breakdown, so we're going, we're, we're actually decreasing the number of bedrooms. So there's gonna be two one bedrooms. The garden unit is gonna be about a 1,200 square foot one bedroom, which will walk right out into the backyard. The unit number, the garden level, the unit number one will be over a thousand square foot, one bedroom. Unit three and unit four are going to be duplexes. Uh, unit three is going to be a duplex, two bedroom, two bath. Is it two bath or two and a half bath? Unit three? Two and a half. Two and a half bath. Unit three, which is about uh, 14, I believe it's 1,400 square feet on unit Correct, three. that's 1439. 1439, and, and unit four is a duplex as well as a two bedroom, two bath, and that's gonna be around the, the same uh, square footage. And there's no roof decks proposed? There are back decks. 
Rear decks. Is this a rear deck on the roof or? No, rear decks only. There's a precedent for decks in this area. Many of the buildings there have decks in the rear. We are not asking for any roof decks of any sort. And this, uh, these rear decks are second means of egress? Indeed they are. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Bazzani? Drawings are adequate, but I do have a question. Councilor, you mentioned that the garden unit is one bedroom? It's a one bedroom. The one, but I'm looking at a plan that shows two. Um, is that the you, new plan? You have a new plan? Oh, he has it. Yes, we have updated plans. Oh, they're right, right here. I apologize. Bring them up here. Yes. So there have been some change. I apologize. Some changes from the original plan, so the bedroom count went down. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, John Allison, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, we would like to go on record in support of this application. Um, we have had two abutters meetings on this project. The second one, there were abutters there in support, and we've also received uh, letters of support from abutters. Thank you. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Members of the board, Steve Moore from City Councilor Ed Flynn's office. We are opposed to this project. Uh, we have heard from the local neighborhood association they are against. Um, thank you very much. Thank Madam you. Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan on behalf of City Council Lodge, Michael Flaherty. Council like to go on record in opposition. Uh, the council has heard from, uh, neighbor, from the neighborhood group, uh, and the council is not in favor of converting basement space into living space for separate units. I'd like to go on record in opposition. Thank you. Okay, given that information, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve with uh, continued BPDA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good Madam luck. Chair, members of the board, thank you for your time. We're going to take a four minute break and reconvene at 1130. Anybody here requesting withdrawals or deferrals for 1130, please make sure you're uh, lined up and ready to go. Thank you.
uh, Board of Appeal for um, Tuesday, May 22nd is back in session. Uh, just a reminder, please make sure your cell phones are off. And if you need to have conversations, please take them outside of the room. We're having a, a hard time today hearing the testimony in front of us. Um, also, in conformance with the open meeting law, I'm informing you that this meeting is being live streamed. Finally, we are here to gather information. We, we're here to gather new information. Every, every process that's occurred before is advisory to this board. So it, when, your chance, when you have a chance to speak either for or against the project, put your name and address on the record and tell us why you're in support or not. If somebody prior to you has already stated your concern, put your name and address on the record just so that we can be sure we're getting new information that will help inform our decisions. Okay? Mr. Fortune? Thank you, Madam Chair. This is for the rediscussions for 1130. Are there any deferrals or withdrawals for 1130? Yes. Address, ma'am? Good morning. Address, please? 173 Humboldt. For the record, calling BOA 617-813-173 Humboldt Avenue. Name and address for the record, please. Chair of the board of You can sit down. <laughs> Are you deferring? Yes. Okay. And for what reason? Additional time to work with ISD and the community. Okay. And you read it into the record um, adequately, Mr. I Hunter? did, Madam Chair. Okay. Could, May could, could I ask a question? This would be the one, two, three, or fourth deferral? Yes. <laughs> Is there a, a reasonable probability? Yeah, this can be resolved with the next deferral. We're hopeful. Um, that's why we're continuing to pursue this. Uh, but right now, it's um, it's not clear. Okay, um, because we're we're not we don't tend to give an unlimited number of uh, deferrals. So perhaps um, you should consider this your last deferral and try and get it wrapped up. Okay. With that in mind, um, Madam Chair, could we uh, continue it into September then and not during the summer so okay. that okay. we Plus accommodate we, people's schedules? We can do Christmas if you like. We can do Christmas if you like. Christmas? Yeah. Uh, Maybe it might be a present. It, so, so um, first of all, may I have a motion? Motion for deferral. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The date, please? September 25th. OK. Thank you very much. Not Christmas. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals? Hearing none, I'll go to the first case <coughs> for rediscussions. BOA 725 789 287 to 293 Maverick, Maverick Street. This is a raise the existing building, combined lots, and erect a mixed use structure consisting of retail on the first floor, 37 units above floors, and parking for 30 vehicles. The violation of Article 53, Section 56, insufficient parking 2.0 unit is required. Article 53, Section 56.2, 56.5.A, uh, parking maneuverability and stackers in tandem. Article 53, Section 8, the MFR is forbidden. Article 53, Section 8, the retail is forbidden. Article 53, Section 9, excessive FAR. Article 53, maximum allowed building height is exceeded, 35 feet is max. Article 53, insufficient lot per dwelling unit, 1,000 square feet unit is required. Article 53, section 9, usable open space, 300 square feet per unit. Article 53, section 9, insufficient side yard setback, 2.5 feet is required. Article 53, section 9, number of allowed stories has been exceeded, 3 stories max. Article 53, Section 9, insufficient rear yard setback, 30 feet minimum required. And Article 53, Section 54, screening and buffering, none is proposed. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Richard Linz, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston. On behalf of MG2, is the petitioner uh, for this application. With me is Tim Laranger. He is the architect with Embark Studios uh, for this particular project. As the secretary indicated, uh, this is a proposal to combine lots, uh, create a new 12,000 square foot lot roughly 12,000 square foot lot, and replace an existing industrial use which is located in the Jeffreys Point section of East Boston. Our proposal is to erect a mixed use building with retail located at the ground floor uh, and 37 new units of residential housing. 
because this project uh, is both subject to IDP as well as Article 80, uh, we went through a process with the BPDA as well. Five of these units will be uh, designated as IDP out of the total of the 37 units that are proposed. Um, this process had an extensive community outreach process uh, which lasted more than a year. Uh, we held over 10 community meetings uh, in the East Boston section, including meetings with both the Jeffries Point Neighborhood Association and the Go Street Citizens Association. I provided letters to the board uh, indicating both of those groups uh, actually supported this project. Uh, a number of changes were made throughout the process as well uh, in order to address a number of the concerns that were raised uh, by the neighborhood. I do have a breakdown of the number of units um, and what the total number, of, this is a mix of one and two bedroom units. Uh, average size on the one bedroom is about 706 square feet. Uh, and the two bedroom average size is about 912 square feet. Uh, the total gross floor area for the building uh, is about 37,000 square feet. Uh, our garage space uh, does include stackers, uh, but we did propose a total of 30 spaces, which, which is uh, consistent with the percentages that seem to be appropriate for that neighborhood. Uh, we did hear from people that were concerned both about the number of parking spaces as well as too many parking spaces. They feel that projects like this in this section of East Boston should be look, focusing on less parking, actually, and we did hear that from a number of residents. I've also supplied the board with letters from four of the direct abutters to the rear of the property, all who are in favor of this project. Uh, this existing site has been an industrial use for uh, probably the better part of 40 years. Uh, they are uh, thrilled with the possibility that this will be redeveloped for residential use. Uh, we've worked out appropriate mitigation with each of those neighbors, uh, including landscaping for each of their yards, as well as uh, some fencing that uh, they're going to have an opportunity to select and have some input on. Uh, we did have a chance to present this to the BPDA board on Thursday. Uh, the BPDA, BPDA, BPDA board approved that under Article 80, uh, and I'm happy to walk through the zoning relief that's necessary if the board deems that appropriate. Tell us about the west elevation. Uh, is there a reason you're pre pre presenting a solid wall? So west, I'm assuming we mean the right side? A8. So that would be the uh, right-hand side of the building. So at the lower level, you're seeing the garage space, uh, and then the upper level sets back uh, to allow for openings and windows. There is an, you can look at some of the uh, aerial photos, there's an existing parking lot located to the right of this property, uh, which I, I don't have a crystal ball, but I would guess that that's likely to be a target for potential future development as well. Uh, the BPDA urban design team indicated that they wanted to see us create an appropriate separation if in fact that were to be developed in the future and the design that you see here on uh, the right side of the building has taken that into account. And is this um, the reason for the retail space? Is, is there a base flood elevation issue here? I believe this area has, uh, a portion of this area is in base flood elevation or, or below the base flood elevation. Uh, the retail actually was a, a comment that we did hear from the neighborhood. Uh, there are a number of developments in this section of Jeffries Point and that further section of Maverick Street. Uh, most recently, the one that's now being uh, presently occupied is 320 Maverick Street, uh, which proposed all residential. They feel with the number of units that are being proposed in this area, we did hear from a number of residents that having a retail use, including the use concept that we're proposing, which is a sort of a casual restaurant cafe, um, was, a, was an acceptable use for this area. It would create uh, activity along the streetscape rather than just having uh, either a residential unit or um, uh, just a garage space at that level. How are the plans, Mr. Bazzani? Drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Is so the board, Jesus Garcia with the Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on record in support for this project. Thank you. Thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I have a motion, please? Design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set with that proviso. Thank you very much. Thank you. Calling BOA 788-830-719A to 719 East 5th Street. This is to construct a third floor addition with rear and roof deck on an existing two-family dwelling. The violation is Article 68, Section 27S-5. It's in the iPod applicability. Article 68, Section 29, 
roof structure restrictions, Article 68, Section 8, side yard is insufficient, and Article 68, Section 8, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Mike McNally, 803 East Broadway, South Boston, Mass. Uh, Tim Johnson, architect, 190 Old Colony Ave, South Boston. Madam Chair, members of the board. We are proposing a third floor addition to an existing two-story row house, two-unit row house with garage. Currently, the first unit is located in the basement under the garage. We are proposing to bring that basement unit up to the second and new third floor with the second unit and reconfigure them as duplexes. Keep the existing garage. We are also just made a, uh, an arrangement with the abutters that we're going to delete one of the roof decks and that we'll have only one roof deck accessed by one bulkhead, 12 by 12, uh, with no hard gas line to the roof deck. And the roof deck would be accessible to both units? Uh, no, Madam Chair, only to the front unit or unit one. And what are the sizes of each unit? Uh, the size of each unit, uh, unit one, which we're relocating to the second and third floor as a duplex unit, is a two bedroom, two bath unit, two and a half bath, about 1,200 square feet. Bless you. Uh, unit two, which again is gonna be on the second and third floor as a duplex unit, is a three bedroom, two and a half bath, at 1,700 square feet. But in this proposal, we are not changing occupancy. We are keeping two uh, dwelling units, and we're keeping the same amount of gross square footage, because all we're doing is relocating the basement unit to the third floor. And the uh, garage, has that always been there, or that's a proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, that is an existing garage. Okay. Did uh, you do the projects on A Street? On, on A Street, um, which, those two residential projects? Um, 39A Street? Pardon? 39A yeah. Street? Yes, I did 39A Street, ma'am. Okay. Uh, what, but that had the garage off of Silver Street. Yes, I know that. Yeah. Uh, no, the garage uh, door will remain as it is because there are two parking spaces on the street that one of the abutters uh, would like to see preserved, and therefore we're keeping the garage door where it is. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Pizzani? The, the drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? The existing living area that is currently under garage, what's going to be used for afterward? Uh, we will, we're going to fill it with structural fill. There could be a small utility basement area, but the majority of that basement will be uh, demolished and filled with structural fill. And then we'll do a slab on grade for the garage. Okay. Are you getting, sorry, I'm curious. Are you getting water? Is that, why the, why the shift? There, uh, it just makes for two better units. Right now, the lower level unit, candidly, is it's an older building. Um, the structure itself just needs to be renovated. And in creating one lower level unit, two bedroom, um, versus creating two nice units, um, it just, yeah, for, for uh, habitable space, I mean, it's just a much better layout. It's a much better living area for people in the city. And it also didn't really have the required uh, light, natural light coming down there. So by bringing it up, it makes for a better unit. Yeah, there are issues with some of the lower level units in the city. This brings it above ground, creating two vertical units rather than one horizontal lower level, one horizontal on the second floor. Okay. Um, let's see. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Chair, members of the board, John Allison, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, we would like to go on record in support. Uh, as the proponents mentioned, they have agreed with the neighbors to uh, eliminate one of the roof decks and make the other roof deck a 12 by 12 deck accessed by a hatch with no grills. Um, and we would also just like to ask that they continue working with the neighbors on the issue of the garage. Thank you. Anybody here to speak? Are you speaking in support? Please, your name and address on the record. My name is Colette Herr. I live at 117 N Street in South Boston. Uh, I have two issues. One is we want to speak again with the uh, about the current garage. It's been used as a storage area up until this point, not really as a live garage. So we want to discuss further um, about the entrance and exits of cars going in and out of there. 
Um, the second issue that I wanted to bring to your attention is that although Mr. McNally has confirmed when he purchased it that it was a two-family home, the assessing records with the City of Boston still indicate it's a one-family and has always been one family. Um, so I think before anything gets approved that we should really have the assessing records updated. Um, okay, thank you. Is anybody here to speak in opposition? May I? You're, you're in opposition? Please put your name and address. Oh, wait, one. You can wait a minute, right? Oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. I, I didn't recognize you. Your name and address for the record. I mean, you're, who are you representing? Anna Calderon from Councillor Flynn's office. I'm here to speak on opposition to this project due to Article 68. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Sullivan, on behalf of the Council Lodge, Michael Flaherty. Council is going record uh, in opposition. Um, there was uh, opposition prior to today's hearing. Uh, but the councillor uh, more so would like to go on a record of opposition also due to the uh, Article 68 ramifications and the amount of effort that went into drafting Article 68, uh, but would ultimately leave the decision up to the board. Okay, thank you. Anybody else to speak in opposition? If, if anybody else who needs to speak, please line up. Me. <laughs> Chelsea Blanchard. Um, I live at 131 N Street. Um, I think that there are very serious issues about the entering and exiting of this garage design and I think that that would be better suited for a deferral rather than um, design review. That's Thank you. There are some very serious concerns about the neighbors on either side of that garage. Thank you. Uh, and I would also like to note that this applicant has gone to great lengths to work with the neighbors so we really appreciate that. Hi, I'm in Butter, Eleanor Engel, 120 N Street, the corner of N and East Fifth. I'm speaking against it also, just registering my vote. There's still a lot to go, especially on that whole garage business. The same. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, given that information, uh, may I have a motion, please? I'm going to make a motion to approve with continued BPDA design review. Can we also have a look at the garage so that it doesn't come off as that solid door? That yes, that's something more permeable, visible? Yes, Madam Chair. And we'll work with the neighbors to make sure it's safe in terms of uh, tactile strips on the sidewalk and also but a even strobe. The, vis the visuals of it. We'll work with the BT BPDA. Okay. You're an architect. Is there a second? BPDA. All yes, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries with that proviso. Calling the next you, case. Chair, members of board. Thank Calling the next case, BOA 768-730, 844 to 846 East 3rd Street. This is to raise the existing structure and erect a new four-story building with seven residential units and ten parking spaces in garage at gray. The violation is Article 27S, Section 5. This is in the South Boston iPod applicability. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address. So, Mr. M Morancy, hold on. Can I have the conversations taken outside of the room, please? We're just having a hard time hearing the applicant. Go ahead. Uh, I'm uh, George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston. I represent uh, the applicants and the property owners, Jody and Joanne Longo, who are uh, in the back of the room. They are here today. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, board members are being provided with revised plans. This matter was deferred a few weeks ago. Um, the result of that deferral has been a further redesign of the building. Uh, the plans uh, in possession of the board now depict a, a five-unit uh, five building here at 844 uh, East 3rd Street. This is uh, an MFR multifamily residential zoning district. Uh, this was a zoning compliant project at seven units. Uh, it remains a zoning compliant project at five units. Um, well, Mr. Morancy, are the parking spaces the same, same, same? Ten, ten yes, there are ten parking spaces, so two per unit. These are traditional full-size garage parking spaces. Uh, there would be uh, two two-bedroom units. These would be 1,525 square feet. There would be three three-bedroom units ranging from 2105 to the owner's unit, uh, my clients do intend to stay at the property, uh, to the owner's unit, which would be 3,098 square feet. That's the large top floor unit. Uh, with respect to uh, the zoning code, again, this is an MFR district under Article 68. 
the, there's no minimum lot size requirement. This lot is 7,294 square feet, which results in a density of one proposed unit per 1,495, uh, 1,459 square feet of lot area. The minimum lot width and frontage here is 20 feet. Uh, the uh, lot in question has 57 feet of width and frontage. The maximum FAR in the district is two. The FAR being proposed is 1.77. The maximum building height is 40 feet, which is where the uh, proposed building would be. It's also approximately the height of the existing building to the roof of the, uh, the, the, uh, the ridge line of the roof. The required front yard setback here is five feet. This building would have an eight foot front setback. There are three foot side yard setbacks on each side, uh, which matches uh, the setbacks required by the code. Yeah. There's 200 square feet of usable open space per dwelling unit required by Article 68, resulting in a requirement of 1,000 square feet of open space. This project would have 3,256 square feet of open space. As I mentioned, it is entirely zoning compliant and is here for iPod compliance only. Correct. The building is the same size. The units became larger uh, as they were as the number was reduced from seven to five. The uh, on the color sheet that I handed out uh, of uh, taking an aerial or taken from the web an aerial which shows the existing building and then superimposed the footprint of what uh, approximate footprint of what the new building would be. And the property line goes to? To the back side of, uh, of the pool. You can see I, I actually took the property line of the building of the new building at 933 East 2nd Street, which was a 20 unit building approved uh, some time ago by this board. And the dotted line on that, uh, on that uh, red block indicates the area of that, uh, of that parcel. So uh, 844 goes essentially to the beginning of that parcel uh, in the rear. Questions from the board? Ms. I forget if I asked you if the plans were adequate. Drawings are adequate. Any question? Um, does anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Representatives of elected officials first. Chair, members of the board, John Ellis and Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, we'd like to go on record in opposition. We have held um, a few abutters meetings on this project, and even at five units, it is uh, very large. There's a lot of opposition in the community. It's not really consistent with the rest of the buildings. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, is this better? Um, it's, it's, it's not really consistent with the rest of the buildings on the block, which are primarily single and two families with possibly some three families. So for that reason, we're in opposition. Thank you. Members of the board, Anna Calderon with, uh, from Councillor Fling's office. I'm here to speak on opposition to this project due to um, Director um opposition. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, on behalf of the Council of Michael Flaherty. Uh, echoing the sentiments of the Mayor's office, Council like to go on record in opposition and stand with the neighbors. Madam Chair, members of the board, Councillor Savvy George, would like to go on record as an opposition. Okay, hold on. Um, all the abutters, can you line up? And this is just a reminder that if somebody has already stated your concern, just put your name and address on the record, because I think we'll get a sense pretty clearly what the what the issues are. So give us new information if you're speaking. Before P Street, I live. Uh, I'm an abutter. I live in a. Uh, Row of five single family homes, fought for 40 years to keep them single families, built in 1863. Uh, this new development does not go with the neighborhood. What they're talking about on 2nd Street was a commercial building that's behind the Luangos house. My name is Mary 
foreclosure. And I've been a tenant at 828, owned the home at 828 East 3rd Street, brought all my children up there. And now I have two children here that have houses on that block. And it, it's just, this just isn't in keeping with the character of the block to have that big condo station there, the condo building there. So I am for against it. Jim Lazar, we have a family, triple deck at 845 East Third Street, right across the street. We oppose this project. Thank you. Michael Gannon, 836 East Third Street. I'm the director butter. I have a single family. His property will go 40 feet, three feet from my yard, from, from the property line, plus 70 feet long. Take away the sun. I can see the ocean when I come out my front door. This will all be gone. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, Patricia O'Keefe, 841 East 3rd Street, and I'm opposed to this project as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a pump 852 East 3rd Street, and again, I just need all developed and I'm opposed to the project. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Madam Mr. Chair, I, I do have some signatures I'd like to uh, submit in support. Uh, this is a petition uh, in support, and the addresses associated with the uh, signatures are 831 East 3rd Street, 823 East 3rd Street, 829 East 3rd Street, 832 East 3rd Street, 860 East 3rd Street, and 925 East 2nd Street. So that's how many separate buildings? Is that six separate buildings? Uh, yes. Okay. Given that information, may I have a motion, please? I have a motion. I'm going to make a motion to oppose. For denial? Denial, yep. Straight. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'm sorry, it's been denied. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling BOA 778-326, 8 Deedee's Lane. This is erect a new four-story single-family dwelling with garage, rear stair, front, and roof decks on a newly created lot. The violation is Article 29, Section 4. It's in the Green Greenbelt Protection Overlay District. Article 27S, Section 5. It's in the South Boston iPod applicability. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Danuta Grodzinska, 27 Marine Road. Um, 161. West 7. Uh, Tim, jo West, sorry. Tim Johnson, architect, 190 Old Colony Ave, South Boston. Madam Chair, members of the board, there are eight through lots between Marine Road and Dee Dee's Lane with the crossroad of K Street on one side. Two of the eight lots have existing dwellings fronting on Dee Dee's Lane. And if you look at the contextual images I submitted to the board on page one and two, you'll see the proposed building with the context of the other buildings fronting on Dee Dee's Lane. My clients are proposing on another one of those through lots with an address at 37 Marine Road, an owner-occupied detached single-family dwelling with garage fronting Dee Dee's Lane. This so is a zone. The address, the formal address will be Dee Dee's Lane. 8 Dee Dee's Lane, Madam Chair. And it's a through lot. It's a through lot. Okay. Uh, this is a zoning compliant building. However, with two abutters meetings, we conceded the fourth story, which was zoning compliant, and we reduced it down to a three-story single-family dwelling. We went from four stories to three stories, five bedrooms, three and a half baths, to two bedrooms, two and a half baths. Uh, well, speak, slow down. So it's still one family. Yes. It's from five bedrooms down to? Two bedrooms. Two bedrooms. And we went from and, uh, two, three and a half baths to two and a half baths with a total square footage of living area 1720. 1720 square feet? Yes, ma'am. And how is parking being accommodated? Uh, we have a garage. Uh -huh. uh, and the plans will show uh, two cars in the garage. OK. And, and what's triggering the G? Pod? The G pod is that we are on the boulevard, which fronts uh, Dorchester Bay. Because you're in Marine. OK. And um, then the iPod, of course, is the interim planning over uh, So how much of um, this property is affected by the G pod? Uh, I would say all, the entire property is affected by the G pod now. OK. 
I don't have a GPOD map, but I, I would say it is. Okay. Uh, so we, uh, we proposed a zoning compliant single family dwelling. We took a story off the building uh, to uh, hopefully the neighbors would be in support. And we still have a zoning compliant owner occupied three story single family dwelling. Can you give us a minute to just scan through the plans. I'm the, so this is so this is not a through property then. You've it's been subdivided. As I look at C01. Ah uh, yes, ma'am. We are proposing to subdivide it. So there's an existing two and a half story, and this is a proposed one family. That's great. The, uh, this one was sitting on its. So this one is not cited as two buildings on the same lot. So it's respecting these citations are respecting that subdivision. Yes, yes, Madam Chair. And okay. the building at 37 at the other end of the lot is a single family, and that will also be owner occupied by my client's family. Now the question becomes, with this subdivision, how much of 30, 37 Marine Road gets pushed into any violations? What are the violations? Oh, there are no violations for 37 Marine Road. The, so it's so the green building. even with... Uh, Except There'll be no yard violations, no lot area violations. There are no, uh, 37 Marine Road is zoning code compliant with the subdivision. Okay, as is this one. As is this one. Okay. What are the plans for the zoning? The, the, the drive but how does 37 Marine Road uh, handle the parking? Handle what, Mr. Pisani? Parking. Well, it's a, uh, uh, 37 Marine Road was under the old base code. Uh, and one in two families are exempt from uh, off-street parking requirements. Okay. okay. And this is going to, you're within the base <coughs> flood elevation. Oh, within no, we are not. Zone. No, you're not? No, we are not. Okay. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Is anybody here to speak in, in opposition? To the board, John Allison, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go on record in opposition at this time. Um, we did hold two abutters meetings. Uh, I would like to recognize that the proponent did take a story off the building, so it is now a three-story um, building, but there is still a lot of opposition um, to this project and really to having anything built in this backyard for many reasons. Thank you. Hi, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councilor Fling's office. We are here to oppose this project due to significant opposition from our voters. Um, over 100 emails and calls um, that we got in our office about it. Thanks. Paul Sullivan, we have City Council Elijah Michael Flaherty. Council like to go on record in strong opposition, echoing the sentiments of the mayor's office and standing with the neighbors. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. Ronald Claude from Councilor Yana Presti's office, and we'd like to go on the record as opposing this project. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Councilor Sabi George, would like to go on record in opposition as well. Madam Chair, members of the board, Kristen Halbert for Councilor at Large, Michelle Wu's office, and we'd like to go on record in opposition of this project. Hi, my name is Paul Burke. I'm a director of butter. I live at 35 Marine Road, South Boston. Can you can, can can you guys please help us and speak into the mic? Okay. And also, just as I'd asked previous speakers, uh, tell us, give us new information, okay? Right. My name is Paul Burke. I live at 35 Marine Road. I'm going to direct butter to uh, 8 Eddie's Lane slash 37 Marine Road. Um, hundreds of signatures and letters have been sent to the board previously. The one thing I would like to submit to the board now is a signed letter from the Gate of Heaven Neighborhood Association opposing that. That was not presented to the board previous to that. Thank you. Uh, I also have a quick, just a picture I'd like to give to the board while I speak very briefly. If I may. Uh, as the quote, uh, this project splits a small parcel into two two smaller lots. As such, the nature, size, and scope are in direct conflict with budding properties. And speaking to uh, Mr. Johnson's uh, argument about the number of buildings that are on Deddy's Lane, 
One is a barn that has been there uh, for over 100 years. It's two stories. The other building was a rebuilt building. It's much smaller in height and also is much shorter in depth. Um, as far as a quality of life, it's insensitive to the scale, form, and density to the established neighborhood character. Um, while this building does provide two parking spots for it, uh, parking that is now currently used for 37 Marine Road is eliminated. So those now will have to find on-street parking. It also, the height and the width will pre present a shade issue for all the properties that no longer have that. Um, in 2018, the mayor extended the iPod for one year. Um, I believe it was a tool to balance the demand for new growth while protecting and maintaining the character of the fabric of the neighborhood. I believe this uh, is a perfect example of why the iPod was put in place, and I ask you that you deny this uh, petition. Thank you. Lisa Cox, 365 K Street. I would just like to go on record as being opposed to this project. Thank you. Corn, 45 Marine Road. I'm in the butter to the property. Your name again? Frederick Krohn. Thank you. Yeah, 45 Marine Road. I'm opposed to the project for the quality of life impact that was uh, outlined previously. Uh, my name is Leonard Walsh. I reside at 1588 Columbia Road, South Boston. I'm a direct abutter and owner of the property, and I am in opposition of the, of the uh, addition. Marie Denton, direct abutter. Uh, I am uh, in total opposition with this project as well. Chairman, uh, Philip McMahon, resident, 47 Marine Road for 40 years, lived in South Boston for 75 years, and uh, I'm I just want to go on record that I'm, I'm opposed to this project. Thank, Thank you. you. Colleen Nee, 41 Marine Road. I'm opposed to this for the same reasons that was stated, but also for the precedence that this would set, because the developers are speaking, but this is two lots. This is one lot. I've li lived as a direct abutter for 45 years. It's one lot that they're, direct, they're cutting in two. So one small backyard, one house will now have no backyard, and the other one will have, what, 10 feet, perhaps. So it's a totally against the character of the neighborhood. Thank you. Thomas Walsh, 381 K Street, opposed also. Thank you. Elizabeth Burke, I'm a director butter at 35 Marine Road, and I'm opposed. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? I'm going to make a motion um, to oppose. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. This project's been denied. Thank you, Madam Chair. Have a good day. Calling the next case, calling BOA 796-341, 63 to 65 Moreland Street. This is a construct a new eight unit building. The violation is Article 50, Section 28. A multifamily is forbidden use. Article 50, Section 29, additional lot area is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 50, Section 29, the building height is excessive in feet. Article 50, Section 29, usable open space is insufficient. And Article 50, Section 29, the front yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small. I have a business address at 15 Broad Street, Boston, Mass, 02109. With me today are Evan Smith of Place Taylor and Travis Anderson of Place Taylor. Today we are here seeking relief to erect eight residential units with nine. Do favor and just bring the, um, sure. We are here seeking relief to erect eight residential units with nine parking spaces on a vacant. How many units? Eight residential units. You're still doing eight yep. units, okay. Nine parking spaces on a vacant lot that's approximately 10,400 square feet. The zoning subdistrict is 3F4000 and the violations are as follows. Multifamily residential use is forbidden. We're proposing eight units. Um, the additional lot area is 2,000 for each. The FAR, Madam Chair, is 0.8. We are coming in at 0.84, just a little bit over the required FAR. The building height, um, the requirement is 35 feet. Um, from the sidewalk, it's 38 feet. The proposal is 38 feet, but from grade, it's 35. Um, the open space um, where it is required is 5,859. We're coming in at 
3,240 square feet. And with regard to the front yard, uh, the requirement is 20 feet. We have 13.5. I'll turn it over now to um, Travis Anderson, who will go through the site plan and, and get you familiarized with, with the plan. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Travis Anderson, uh, Place Taylor, 100A Warren Street. Uh, I'll just talk through the initial siting and massing of the building. Uh, upon early site analysis, we decided to use an existing curb cut uh, for the building, and that, uh, in order to do so, made us push the building forward toward Moreland Street so we could accommodate the, the nine parking spaces in the back. Uh, that's the reason. Does that meet modal front yard? Uh, there is no modal because it's on a corner, and it's the only lot building on that lot. It is um, pretty much an approximation to the building on the other side of Montrose Street, which is another uh, brick multifamily. So they will align, uh, but there is no modal that we need to conform to. Um, along the Montrose side, we actually uh, shifted the building more to the other side yard to try to keep that green space along there and with the intent of, of maintaining some of the trees that are existing on the site that are some nice uh, older pines and whatnot. Um, and then uh, in terms of the overall massing, uh, we know that this is a historic uh, neighborhood by nature. So we looked at breaking down the uh, massing or, par or part T into three distinct um, building typologies. The first is a mansard uh, unit that sits directly on the corner. The middle is a brick uh, row house, so to say. And then the end unit is a bayfront that keeps with the ties in the in vernacular of the entire neighborhood. Um, we also uh, talked with the Boston Preservation Alliance um, about the historic qualities of the, of the building and they actually are on board and support as well. Um, during one of the community meetings, an uh, issue about uh, fencing and screening came up. So we're looking at you know, doing a, a, a wrought iron type fence that fits more within the context of the neighborhood. Fencing, fencing and screening of what? Of the uh, just along, uh, oh, the entire uh, along the front okay. facing Moreland. Because um, when you walk down Moreland Street, there is a lot of nice kind of yeah. old iron work and whatnot. So it is our intent to really kind of hold true to the, to the neighborhood um, in, in the style of, of the building and to also um, accommodate parking concerns. Um, and as far as green space goes, there is a, a park that's um, diagonal to the lot. Uh, I actually live in the neighborhood and use the park with my daughter all the time. It's a great space. So, so uh, tell us how the parking is supposed to work. So these are all surface, surface parking it's spaces? It's all surface parking spaces. You'll come in off the existing curb cut on Montrose um, and then pull uh, facing in, or you could back in and you'll abut the, the, the rear of the building. We'll have a little bit of a, like a five foot buffer there, but. And is there, is there a screening proposed from at the rear of, at the Montrose edge of the abutter? Yeah, that's part of the reason why we want to maintain that landscape buffer. Um, and we could also do a, a privacy fence. We'll of course enclose any trash or anything like that too as privacy screening. Yep. And roof decks? Uh, there's one uh, for the three bedroom. Uh, so the unit breakdown is a, seven 800 square foot uh, two bedroom units and then there's one uh, three bedroom unit that's approximately 1400 square feet that one has a, a roof deck that faces uh, kind of the backyard tell the plans mr bazzani the drawings are adequate any questions from the board what, uh, what's Matt? on the site now uh, it's an empty it's a it's vacant, vacant lot. lot a whole lot yeah. okay. and are these uh, for sale or rental units these are uh, going to be for sale units, and um, part of uh, where we've reached some opposition with the neighborhood has been on the unit count. Um, as of right, we can do five units, and we're asking for eight units. The reason specifically that we're asking for eight units is that we're trying to build condos that are selling below 400000 Right now, you know, if we were to try to build the five as of right, we'd end up with 16, 1,700 square foot units that we'd have to sell somewhere in the 700,000s. There's a lot of that happening in this part of Roxbury already, and there's very little coming to market that's available below 400,000. So the idea here is to build two bedroom condos that are built to passive house standards, which are really energy efficient, and uh, put them at a price point that you know, people can afford. So. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Madam Chair, with regard to community process, we've had a couple of meetings with the Pathways, Roxbury Pathways Neighborhood Association, and we had a Butters meeting sponsored by the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Unfortunately, um, there, there is some opposition to the project, and we do have support for the project as well. Mixed bag. Mixed bag. Mixed okay. Bag. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, 
Madam Chair, Boston City Councilor Kim Janey representing Roxbury. I um, do not come to this, this decision lightly. After careful consideration, after hearing from several of my neighbors, residents who live in this area, I've heard uh, definitely strong opposition, but I have also heard from residents who support this. And they do so uh, for a number of reasons. I know that there has been deep concern around density, um, the difference of the, the two units going from eight to six, um, and parking, but I think there are other things that outweigh that, namely uh, the price point. If they are forced to go with five units, that will lock many of the residents in Roxbury who are current residents out, and they will not be able to afford this. By offering eight units, you will have a price point that is more likely to attract people from our community to be able to purchase their first home. These are all home ownership uh, units. Again, I don't take this lightly. I know that there is support, and I know that there is also opposition. The other things that I looked at as a city councilor, which is very important to me, is the equity piece, the piece around MBEs and WBEs, and making sure that they are not only workers on this job, but are also owners. So I know that Place Taylor is a co-op that has 40% uh, minority ownership, and that is also important to me. The final thing is that this is a sustainable project, um, and so that is very important. And so while I hear the concerns around parking and density, I believe that is a larger issue that we must address as a city, that um, as we continue to grow, our population is growing, our challenges around traffic patterns, parking are very, um, problematic, I think, for us as a city that we really need to tackle. So I would uh, encourage, because of the MBE, because of the price point of these units, because of the process, and that there is support, um, I would recommend your support as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'm happy to speak with any of the residents who are here. I know that there are mostly residents here in opposition uh, and in support. I'm happy to speak with anyone afterwards. Thank you. Greetings, Madam Chair, members of the board. Joshua McFadden, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I'd like to go on record and support as well. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Ronald Claude from Councilor Yana Presley's office. She would like to note that uh, we would like to go in support of this project, and we would like to note the fact that we support the district councilor and her rationale on it. So thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Kelly Ransom, Councilor Sabi George's office. The councilor sh uh, shares the concerns of the neighborhood regarding the size and respects their position, but she also, also trusts Councilor Janey's judgment, so therefore she is in support of this project. Madam Chair, members of the board, Kristen Halberg from Councilor Michelle Wu's office would like to go on record in support of this project. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, of the Council Councilor Elijah Michael Flaherty, echoing the sentiments of Councilor Janey, the council to grow on record in support. Solomon Chowdhury, I'm um, 37 Moreland Street. I also own 60 Moreland Street, which is right across from the uh, subject property here to uh, uh, support the project. Is anybody, are you going to speaking in support or is that, may I have a, a, anybody who's here to speak in opposition? Please let me hear from you. And again, as I said before, give us new information, okay? And you can line up in the center. Hi, my name is Lorraine Wheeler and I organize the Neighborhood Association, you know, that organizes the neighborhood cleanup and all of these other processes. And we met at a community abutters meeting that uh, Joshua organized, and we met as a neighborhood association. And at none of those meetings was there support for this project. So we haven't talked to any of the people who are here from the city and support this project. Although we so have- So can I ask you, Lorraine, what, yes. is, what is the opposition based on? Is it, go the, ahead. The neighborhood is 3F, uh, a three-family district neighborhood. It's a historic, a federal register historic course, district. Yeah. The lot is 10,600 square feet, so it's five as of right. And we still said, then build six. But they need to build the most because the ownership of the lot is in New York. And so <laughs> it's difficult for us that and, I, and we're appealing to you today to enforce the zoning. 
because these black uh, neighborhoods, they cannot exist if all the time they've got to go to superior court before the legal zoning is enforced. The legal zoning is five units, and we have offered them six. Eight is too much. It's in the middle of a two-way street that is a very busy street. It's surrounded by these three family buildings, and we are simply, before they bought it, they should have looked at the legal zoning. So I have 60 signatures on a petition. There's at least 40 uh, letters in opposition that's been sent to your office. And um, so I'm going to give you those as well as the ownership of the law. And we are just going to um, pray that you are going to support these neighbors before we're all pushed out of Roxbury. And I have one other thing to say. One of the people that came here in support of it is a developer, too. He lives on Hutchins Street. And so, of course, they're going to support one another with regard to these projects that don't have support from the actual residents. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Cheryl Spence. I'm in a butter, 33 Montrose Street, Unit 3. I'm also speaking on behalf of Jose Rodriguez, who is 33 Montrose Street, Unit 1. He's not able to be here. Um, I just want to say that I am opposed to these six variances. I live on the third floor. I'm opposed to the height variance of five, that five feet above grade. It's a lack of privacy to myself. There's a lack of green space. All these things have to be met. There's criteria for the Board of Appeals, and I'm sure you're aware of it, that there are four criteria to be met, all to be met. They meet none of them. The only variance that, that they did not, they came here that do, they don't need is for parking. It's an insult to the community to come with six variances to build something that is legally not supposed to be there, according to our zoning rules. We have rights as butters. It's a lack of privacy, and I really am opposed to this project. Um, I'm opposed to roof decks. There's no roof decks in that area. Um, okay. Uh, I'd also like to say that it's just really a shame that we did come t together as a community and agreed, and it wasn't until two or three days ago that there came this opposition from Kim Janey's office. I don't understand why. Listen, I, but this everybody is, this who's is crazy. lined up here, give me information right, on the project, okay? That's okay, the information thank you. I have. It exceeds all the variances, and so you we have a right it, you just as think a butter. Too dense. Too dense. Basically, and it, it, yeah. it doesn't meet any of the criteria to get a variance. Their next point of relief is six units. Thank they don't you. want to agree to six thank units. Ma'am, your name and address. My name is Marcia Smith, and I live at number 94 Moreland Street. Though for the 30 years, lived around the corner on the next street, so long-term resident. I have here in hand a letter from uh, State Representative Tyler, who is standing with us opposing the, uh, the uh, okay. and the size, all the variances. I heard what from South Fox was spoken. He talked about the end of 75. Can you speak into the mic? I, for some reason today, I'm having an awful time hearing. OK, is this better? Yes, thank okay. you. Uh, what was referred to as a vacant lot is sort of not right. It was a beautiful garden, flower trees uh, that were very well maintained by the adjacent owner, the ones the developer bought this from. So you're going from what was a very, very beautiful piece of property in terms of the, the landscaping there to neighbors who are going to look out at parking uh, and, and back porches, garbage cans, whatever. To enter, they say they have nine parking spaces. One of the problems with the parking is you're going to come onto a very narrow one-way street to get to that parking. So the people who are opposed, opposite, sitting opposite on Montrose Street are going to have steady traffic coming in from Montrose Street. Also, with visitors, there is not, again, going to be enough parking. I, live in, I don't have a driveway. I live at number 94 many, many nights coming from shopping and all, I have to park one, two blocks down and lug my bags up because already there's not enough parking. The difficulty of getting into the parking behind that building is going to mean there's going to be more parking on the street. And it's just going to make it very difficult for that, that area. The street 
It's a very beautiful street. It is, uh, this, that section of Moreland Street is historic. Their buildings, mine dates back, I think, to 1890. Other buildings which uh, <coughs> were built around the turn of the century, many of them had horse garages in the back and all. Putting a building, flush up on the sidewalk, crammed, nine units, is going to totally destroy the look of that neighborhood. This would not happen in the South End. It would not happen in Brookline. It would not happen in Newton. And it's happening in Roxbury. And the very people who say they represent us are standing here opposed to our interests. I beg you to consider that it's not appropriate for our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Now, so far, for the, for the rest of, of you, you who are going to be giving testimony in opposition, I've heard about the concern that, uh, or the statement that this is a historic district, the concern about the trees, um, the density, um, the privacy. If you have, please add more information to that. Otherwise, put your name and address on the record, okay? Chair and members of the board, I would just like to add my name in opposition, Carrie Ann Shan at 33 Montrose. Thank you. My name is Bethel Rose. I would like to add opposition. I am at 37 Fairland Street. Thank you. My name is Charlotte Marie Patilla. I reside at 29 Montrose Street. I'm in a butter. I oppose this. Um, in addition to all the reasons previously cited, including density, green space, lack of privacy, I want to address safety. As some of uh, the folks here have mentioned, this particular lot, a Buxton intersection that abuts a park, is a very, very dangerous intersection. People slow roll right through it. People sometimes treat the stop signs as optional. Putting more cars and more people in that neighborhood is not going to make us safer or stronger. Our kids are going to be in more danger as they travel to the parks. In addition to that, I do not share the claim that somehow a $350,000 price point is going to make this more accessible to my other neighbors. So let's just talk about the zoning. The, all that stuff is on the side. You know, the, the stuff that I really want to hear about is the, the FAR, the height, the open space, those kind of issues. Uh, so uh, besides safety, anything else? And I know you mentioned everything previous uh, speakers had, had identified. No, Madam Chair, I would note that the developers have not articulated to anybody's satisfaction or even to any understanding how this could possibly meet the criteria for a variance and how it could possibly withstand appeal. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Saul Araujo. I reside on the 29 Montrose Street and I strongly oppose this, uh, this project. Uh, besides the, the points that has been raised on them, uh, the issue of uh, um, uh, the not only uh, high density in the, in the, in the community, but also the, the nature of the, the housing. That will be smaller uh, housing that is not going to be uh, creating uh, families who move there, will not, people who are going to move there, not going to create roots because it's a uh, it's very small uh, apartment. So this is in impact at the uh, livelihood of the community. So for this reason, I, I will strongly oppose this, this project. Thank you. and I live at 64 Moreland Street. My house will be directly across from where the project and I am opposed to the project. Thank you. Hello, my name is Shauna Bramble and I live at 64 Moreland Street and my house is right across the street from the um, development. And I, so I completely oppose this um, project. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Michelle Bramble. I live at 64 Moreland Street, directly across from the lot, and I am opposed to it as well. Thank you. Good afternoon, Leslie Shand, uh, 33 Montreal Street, Unit 2, and I'm strongly opposed. Good afternoon. My name is Bolade Olewa. I live at 56 Moreland Street. I've lived there for 30 years, and I strongly oppose the development. I'm sorry, what street do you live at? Moreland Street, 56 okay. Moreland, right across from the development. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor, so you, uh, you've heard, you've heard all the, the statements so far. Um, can you please address uh, some of the open space issues, the preservation of 
increase whatever it is. Um, and how is the parking going to work? Because uh, did I hear that um, that the street is one way, that Montrose is one way? So how will that work? Correct. Yeah, we actually uh, considered doing an additional curb cut along Moreland Street. Um, but as was mentioned, it is a, it's a two-way street. And we actually thought this would um, actually create more of traffic calming if people looped around to the one way, um, rather than having cars kind of coming in and out off Moreland, because it, it does get busy. And I, I agree with all the sentiment that people just drive too fast on that street. No, I, I, um, yes, and that rolling stop. Yeah, and the I rolling get it. stop yeah. is an issue, yeah. Um, and so that's why we looked at maintaining that curb cut along Montrose, um, really to act as more of a, of a buffer to the amount of traffic flow through there. Um, and uh, in regards to open space, uh, unfortunately, when you add cars, you take away green space. Um, if we could, we would not put any parking there and have more green space and position the building back further. But we just had to accommodate the parking as a result. Um, but we did, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we did keep the building positioned off of Montrose to maintain that buffer that's there in the hopes of keep, keeping some of the trees on the site. Um, we actually went out there early on and did a little site excavation. There's putting stone on the site, so we're, it's another reason why the building's coming out of the ground a bit more, is to minimize the impact of construction. And it was also another reason to kind of position the building where we did, because we're up against the ground. Um, also, it's worth noting that um, even if we did the five units, the as of right um, move here, the size of the building wouldn't really change, because we are just slightly over the FAR. We can easily bring it under the FAR with five units. Again, this is about you know the type of housing we want to be selling. We don't want to be selling high-end units. We're trying to do workforce housing, and we're trying to do it without tax subsidy. So. Thank you. Uh, any final words? Um, given all that information, uh, may I have a motion, please? I'm going to make a motion to approve with uh, continued BPDA design review. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Continued BRA design review. And please make sure you continue to talk to your abutters. Most definitely. Yeah, exactly. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Following the next case, calling BOA 766-691-222 Hobbit Street. This is a change of occupants from three to six apartments with new egress stairways of three-level porch Violations Article 60, Section 8. A multifamily residential is forbidden use in the 3F 5000 di subdistrict. And Article 60, Section 9, insufficient additional lot area for a dwelling unit. Name and address for the record, please. Douglas Juan, architect for 222 Harvard Street. Owner is here. Mr. Ovi Gray. I'm going to hand out the uh, copies updated plan an updated zoning refusal letter from ISD planners. Doug, in the meantime, can you please uh, put your name and record on, on the, put your name and address on the record and proceed with the testimony? Madam Chair, what's your question again, please? Put your name and address on the record and let's get started. My, my name is Douglas Wan, 240 Heath Street, JP. Thank you. Okay, tell us what, um, what happened, at, why you were deferred, and what has happened since the deferral. Yeah, we went through the, uh, a few neighborhood meetings and including about our neighborhoods without any opposition, but that's all the support. And we went through the uh, Cartman Square Council, Neighborhood Council twice, and Harvard uh, Blue Hill Circle, we did that, but the only neighborhood where that we wanna go through that we didn't get scheduled is Harvard Talbert Triangle neighborhood. For so that, uh, we do wanna go through that, but somehow we were told not necessary. So. So, so this is still a proposal to change occupancy from three to six apartments? Right, without any constructions. Without, in, sorry? Without any constructions. In the handouts, 
in the middle of that. That's existing building. We are not building any additions. Okay. That, so tell us how the units are going to lay out. Um, what are their sizes? The, how many bedrooms? In the front, that's um, manufactured two units that have been occupied occupy for uh, more than a few decades. In the back, including the, all the basement from the back to the rear, that's uh, new uh, unoccupied yet, so we can easily divide it into create more housing units. So if you see it. Sorry, let me just be, I'm just uh, want to make sure that you tell us precisely how these three to six units are going to work. No possibilities, in fact. I or what's in the plan? If I may, Madam Chair, simply the front is occupied for 30 or more years. Now available as of all approved capital space is this third floor, second, third floor, including basement from here to all the way to the front. Those are all approved habitable space. That's very, uh, the big space, quite a lot, that we want to create more housing units. And he lives in this building, and he want to occupy to have a little studio in the ground floor that is all completely open to the rear yard. And one unit, another unit, second floor, another unit in the first floor, if you can see this photo. Okay, so I'm looking, so let's get this straight. So unit number one, is that the basement? And how big is it and how many bedrooms is it? Let's talk about the With basement. The, yeah, the size is just less than 1,200 square feet. I would say 1,150 so square foot plus minus. Okay, so this is the basement, the proposed basement plan will be one unit, 1,200 square feet. Yes. Okay. Actually, it's, it's what is there now is a pro all approved habitable space. It's much bigger than that, actually. So tell me number, unit number two. Where is it? Number two would be first floor. Okay. Number, the next uh, unit will no, be. No, 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 hold on. So it'd be first floor, how many square feet? 1150, plus my 1150. 1150. And square feet. how many bedrooms? We do three bedrooms, but the uh, BRA, uh, the comment was it's too small, so we changed it to two for so the input. On the record, saying it's a two bedroom. Right. How about unit number three? Same two bedroom, same layout. Okay. How about unit number four? Same layout, the same size on okay. the top floor of this existing building envelope. And so where's, where are unit number five and six? That's here in the front. Okay. That has been occupied for since. So when you say the front means it's that existing building, that existing house? Right. So this, this little house is considered, you're considering it the front? Right. And it's all on the same lot? Oh, yes. All on the same lot. Right. Okay. It's a very us. deep lot. And how uh, Tell us how many units and the size uh, with the how it's many a, bedrooms. It's, it's, it's a quarter quarter acre, okay. and his brother lives in the same place, another quarter acre. I just want to hear okay. about unit five. How many square feet? How many bedrooms? The same size. So it's eleven fifty, and it's two Plus bedrooms. Unit. Yes. And unit number six, same thing. Right. Okay. Now tell us about unit number one. Is that a basement basement unit, or is it? Uh, and what's right. the floor to ceiling height? Uh, ceiling height is enough, uh, eight feet. It's plus, eight feet. Yeah. Okay. Because it's uh, it's just built as a new construction year ago. Okay. And so this building, this construction happened, and then you were triggered year to ago, come yes. here. Okay. Year ago. Okay. And you were deferred to do community process? Yes. Why were you deferred? We went through the three neighborhood meetings, including okay. about our neighborhood, with their support. How, how are the plans, Mr. Pisani? Drawings are adequate. Yes. Yeah. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support? Oh, I, I do. 
Is that is there a wall between those two, the little building and the bigger building? Is it a party wall? Well, there is a right because we're adding it. The fire code building code would call one hour separation, even if it's one building and a one lot, same lot. So. So is that that little building is still existing? Is okay. currently existing? Somebody's living in it, and it's attached to the bigger one. We, yes, we added this addition in the back of that building a year ago and a year ago. Okay. It's all approved. Hold on, hold on. Can, is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Madam Chair, Madam Chair members of the board, Whitney Celestin here with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We held an extensive community process for this project. This, bus, this project was deferred because we wanted to have more community process. So we took this to the Harvard Blue Hill Circle um, Neighborhood Association and to the Codman Square um, Neighborhood Council. The council did not take a position, but the Harvard Neighborhood um, Association did give me a letter of opposition. Um, I feel like this project should have came to the community beforehand. This structure is built on the land already. It's already there, you know? So it, it, it just puts us in a weird position at this point. So. Um, can you tell me what the opposite can you tell me what the opposition was based on? Yes. Mostly the fact that the construction had already occurred? Yes. Okay. That's part of it. And also it would just add too much density to the area. There is a lot of land in the back, however, that would be too many people to be fitting in that one single area. There's just a lot going on in Harvard Street already and this would just not fit the neighborhood. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, just to clarify, if we were to vote to deny today, would that building have to come down? No, that's approved with uh, two or three permits piecemeal, and we all built a year ago. So what is it that we're being asked to approve current, today? Current occupancy is total three. So that means- So you're looking for a change of occupancy from To us. increase the housing unit sustainably. Two is, they're not going anywhere. And from a basement, from the front all the way in the back, it's approved habitable floor area. And we have this building envelope existing, okay. legal. Okay, so if we were to vote to deny your request today, then you would have to end up with fewer units total inside. Right, but that's, that's a huge area. To I, I'm just, okay, I'm we're just, just clarifying. no value judgment, just a question. Okay. Okay. Any, and, anybody else to speak in opposition? And actually, Madam Chair, we feel like you collected uh, supporting. Thank you. Can you add another? Okay. Any, so we heard a lot of information. Yep. May I have a motion, and, please? Madam Chair, if I may, one last point. Uh, can I say that you own the both plots now? Yes. Could you please say that? Can you please take the board away so I can see? Doug, can you take that away so I can see the speaker? So that, board. that board right there. So we can see him. Go ahead, sir, your name and address? Yes, my name is O.B. Gray, <laughs> and I live at uh, 222 Harvard Street in Dorchester. And I own the first the old house there, I had built 30 years ago, 224. Uh, my brother owned it that for 50 years, and I just recently bought it. Uh, and at 220, I originally owned it that building, and I sold it to uh, a neighbor in 04. I see. And the area that I'm trying to utilize now, I, I was in the moving business for 50 years in Massachusetts. And the space that I'm trying to utilize now, I used to park my trucks there. And I retired. So I'm trying to put up some housing uh, for the neighborhood. That's my opposition. Well, if I can summarize, Madam Chair, he lives here and he owns this one, his brothers live together. It's more than a half acre. Right next door, this is a grand family's front of 
Yeah, we know I believe Brad 36 Brown. units in yeah. the same similar lot size. Okay. So we are only asking without any new construction, without any new additions, <coughs> to create a property size, 1,150 square feet of new units, more units for the cities, housing, unbalanced housing, and demand and supply. Thanks so much. Thank right, okay. right next okay. door to me okay. is the Hold on, hold on, guys. One oh. more question here. Rooney, we had, um, you had letters of opposition from the neighborhood. Okay. Can you just clarify that for me? Letter of opposition from the Harvard Blue Hill Neighborhood Association. All right, great, thank you. Okay, now given all this information, may I have a motion, please? Motion to oppose. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. You're opposed to the motion? I'm opposed to the motion to oppose, yes. Who, yeah. And who are the, who are the oppositions? Who, who are the oppositions to the oppositions? So there's I'm, I'm Mark against. Fortune. Pardon? I'm against. Wait, the motion was to oppose. The motion was to oppose. Who, who seconded? Bruce, I you seconded. Who seconded? I voted for it. I voted for it. So you both voted for it. The three oppositions are Bruce, Mark, and Mark? No, I, I voted for it also. I want to know who <laughs> voted against the motion. I vote. I voted. You voted against the Correct. motion? Yeah, I voted against you the voted motion. against the motion? That's it. Okay. I vote with the motion, so the motion carries. Okay. Madam Chair. So, thank you. Um, if okay. not six units, then the board can consider five units. We're not here to negotiate. Okay. You came here with a proposal. We voted on the proposal, and there's now a motion. Okay? So, you, you need to regroup. And mm -hmm. figure out your next steps. Okay. And we'll go through that that neighborhood so, triangle. Yes, do what you need to do. Right. We have we'll agenda okay. items, but I think you guys need to regroup and, and think about your next steps. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is Sanford Street here? Sanford Street. Okay. They're the last four cases, so Sanford Street is not here. I'll make uh, Madam Chair, it's now. Ten minutes of one. Yep. Uh, I'm going to make a motion for denial without prejudice. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The last case is the court remand. Calling BOA 604-337-279 Marlborough Street. Could they please approach Marlborough Street? Are they here? Is anybody here from Marlboro Street? Give us a minute. You want to? You want to take us in here? Would you kindly put your name and address on the record, please? Good afternoon. Paul Rufo, uh, Smith, Doug, and Buell Rufo, 101 Federal Street, Boston, uh, for the uh, applicant. Uh, Michael the applicant, Giuliano. Hold on. The applicant means um, to the uh, play, um, 277 Mar Marlboro, owner of 277. 277 Marlboro Street? 279. 279. 279. Yeah. So you represent Mr. Rufo. 279 Marlboro Street? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Will the other members of this, seated at the table please identify themselves? Uh, Michael Giuliano with Eagle Brook Engineering and Survey, 491 Maple Street in Denver's. And who do you represent? Also the applicant at 279. 279. Yes. Okay. Matthew Walco, law firm Smith, Duggan, Buell, and Rufo for the applicant, uh, 279 Marlboro Street. Is anybody here for 277 Marlboro Street? I am. Your name and address? My name is Matthew Gaines, property manager for 277 Marlboro Street. Okay. Will you please have a seat at the table? So this is, um, so this is a court remand. 
And what I'd like to do is um, to, to reconsider and reopen the case of BOA number 604337. I would like to have the owner of um, 277 Marlborough Street put their name and address on the record um, and tell us about the uh, proposal uh, for um, and the request for the park. Madam Chair, just uh, one slight correction again. It's 279 Marlboro Street, isn't it? Yeah, I'm so confused. That's okay. Okay, 279 Marlboro Street. Right. Okay, so please, um, this is reopening the case. Yes. So please tell us. Um, Thank you. Okay, yes. So yes, please so, uh, give us testimony. This is a new hearing. Give right. us testimony. Right. right. Thank you. So we have um, prepared a package um, uh, for the administrative record. Uh, what I would like to do. Um, just to, by, by way of brief overview, uh, Madam Chair and members of the board, is um, uh, to, uh, to just describe that this is a, a, a total rehab of this building at 279 uh, Marlboro. So as a result, um, a groundwater recharge system had to be installed under Article 32. Um, Article 6 was implicated uh, because it's referenced in Article 32. Uh, on the issue of whether um, the uh, the groundwater recharge system would cause any nuisance or have any impact on any surrounding property. So um, treating this as if it were, uh, in effect, a, a new hearing, we went out and, and uh, hired, uh, the owner went out and hired Eagle Brook Engineering and Survey, um, and uh, Michael Giuliano, who is a, a registered professional engineer uh, specializing in this area, um, who's the principal, uh, prepared a report for us, which we've submitted to you. And with your permission, I'd, I'd like him to walk through the report. We've also, um, which will explain, how, uh, just in summary, to explain how they did the calculations, how we approached the project, uh, how we determined whether the groundwater recharge system uh, would comply with uh, Article 32 requirements how he but before uh, let me yeah. just find out because uh, generally on the groundwater um, we need to know that did you get a, a letter from Boston Water and Sewer which reviewed the the groundwater recharge and did did you have a letter in um, talking about conformancy or non-conformancy right. um, to the recharge requirements yes we have do that in your package? That, that's in the package and it's a letter from Lewis Malara site plan engineer and uh, it goes back to the August 22, 2016 timeframe. where time can I frame. find it in the package? It's the third um, document down, I believe. You see it? Yes. Okay. Oh, I, I get it. Okay. Right. And uh, Mr. Giuliani, again, at the time in August of 2016 that this application first be came before the board, uh, niche engineering. Uh, I'm sure the board is familiar with, had performed all the calculations for the system that was ultimately constructed, and they are the architect, I'm sorry, the architect, they're the engineer of record on this uh, project, and specifically with regard to this groundwater recharge system. But for purposes of this hearing, we had an independent, obviously he's paid by um, my client, but independent in the sense of we asked him to come back, recheck everything, all of that. And what is, what is your conclusion? Uh, Just my, your conclusion. My conclusion is that the, based on my site visit on April 27th, based on the review of all the documents pertinent to this uh, project and based on the independent calculations I did for the determining the volume of the um, recharge system, that the roof runoff and recharge system meets requirements of the groundwater overlay district, meets requirements of the Boston Water Soil Regulations, um, that the system will be able to handle uh, one inch of uh, runoff of, off the impervious areas as required by the regulations and that the roof runoff and the recharge system will not have an adverse impact on the abutting properties. Okay, thank you. Christian, would you like to give testimony? Madam Chairman, the Christian Simonelli, Boston Groundwater Trust. So this case was before you on January 10th, 2017 and at that time uh, we testified that we did indeed have the approval letter from Water and Sewer, uh, which was also dated August 22nd, 2016. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, uh, excuse me, Christian. Um, the letter, the, 
in the package, which is number three, is dated June 3rd, 2016. There were two versions of, of the letter. The first ver version, excuse me, the June um, 3rd, 2016 version had um, a capacity, the system capacity of 232 cubic feet. And the updated August 22nd, 2016 letter had an updated capacity of 225 cubic feet. Still exceeded the 224 foot cu cubic foot requirement. It was essentially just a, re a revision of the capacity of the system, just an update of that uh, number. Mr. Rufo, is the August letter in your package? It is. It should be the third document down. Uh, I think you're down a little bit too far, Mr. Pisani. Yes, you can see. Um, do you want? Yeah. They're right there. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're thank you. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, we understand you as the representative 227 is in opposition, uh, has need, wants voice concerns. So please put your name and address on the record. Matt Canini, uh, 277 yes. Marlboro Street. And I just want to make sure, does the board have a copy of Parmesan Shapiro's letter in picture? Yes, yes. Yep. It's just distributed. Okay. And I just want to submit one of those documents. Summarize for us what, what uh, your concern is. So, I'm in at 277 Marble Street, uh, since 2006. The property, after they constructed the groundwater uh, recharge system, we got flooded. It's so, just, it's hold just, on. So, after, after the installation of the system, you got flooded? That's correct. Was the installation running? Well, I mean, it might have been installed, but it might have not been turned on. I observed it. The pipes were there. I saw the construction. They didn't pour the, the final concrete lid on it, but I observed the, the gravel. I observed the pipes. So it was mostly constructed. Uh, yeah. so when was it flooding? Uh, when did the flooding take place? Yes. Uh, I think it's just letter. It's, uh, it took place in... Um, uh, March 20th, 2017. I do apologize. The tape slipped my mind. It, it, it is referenced in the letter. Yes, it's usually helpful for us to know if you if you can summarize, please, whatever it is in this letter. Okay. okay? Oh. is the fact that this system, um, based on what we have for information, is going to cause an adverse effect to the property at 277 Marlboro Street. And I can elaborate more. I had a, an engineer, Kaluki uh, Engineering Corporation, view the property after the flood. The flood, uh, he did a, a, a letter. I can actually read it into the record. I'd like to. You know, actually put it into the record, okay. but summarize summarize the findings. Haney, can I just read one question? Because yeah. I just read it now. It says it says um, the flooding of the basement and the unit of my client's property in the fall of 2016. Yes. 
but it doesn't say what particular. Let's see, if you go to the next page after your affidavit, that's the next page. It says on certain proceedings before the Eastern Housing Court, yes. it prompted by the flooding of a basement unit at my client's property in the fall of 2016. Yes. Okay. Do you know what particular month or? You know, I, I do. I still don't have to have. I'm sorry. It was October or November. So let me just ask, what is the basement use of your building? So th there's are going to be um, a, a um, three-car garage vertically um, used for the in that area. So there's no habitable space? No. And, I, I'm sorry, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. So yeah, that's well, the engineer can, can address this issue of... But hold on. Uh, yeah, okay. Is, and that habitable space that's at 277, is that legally, yeah. has that been oh, legalized? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So for sure? Yes, 100%. I have the plan signed off in my estate. Okay. There's and bed, basement, bedrooms. Yeah. And uh, they got flooded. When when was that legalized, or when was that? Uh, uh, it was some of the 90s. Okay, so it's, it's before all these regulations were in place. Basically, uh, G-Card regulations were in place. Okay. Okay. So, continue. Yes, so it, as you can see from the schematic here, the cross, the cross proximity of the groundwater recharge system, the bottom system is 7.62, the groundwater is 6.3. Our basement level, is, we're at elevation 8, the bottom of the system. Uh, I'm sorry, the bottom of our basement. And we're on the other side of the wall there. And as you guys know, that day, it, it's, you know, there's water down there. You dig down, you hit water. So the groundwater is at 6. Uh, 6.3. So, you know, I, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to figure out where's this water going to go. You got you go put it into this recharge system. It's going to spread out. It's going to go into the ground. It's going to mound. And we're only two feet away. The living space, the units there. And there's going to be a, a couple of things that have to come into play. The system has a overflow valve at 279. They, they got to propose this overflow valve. So what, what's supposed to happen is if the system goes up and it can't percolate fast enough, it's supposed to overflow into the city sewer. And then they got a backflow valve on it. And the problem is, is the city sewers occasionally they fill up and they surge. So if it, the city sewer fills up and surges, the backflow valve engages that way. But when it engages, it prevents water from going into the system at 279 Marble Street, and it also prevents the water from the system 279 Marble Street from going over the overflow water to go into the, the shared um, the shared um, um, sewer and drainage that's in the back of the alley 217. Uh, uh, and so that's the problem here. When that, system, when that takes place, when the, system, the city system surges, the water's in the system, and the groundwater system, it, it's going to mount. It, the water's going to go wherever it can go. It really can I, can I, I'm, I'm a little confused. I'm reading this, and it happened in 2016, correct? The flooding? Yes. yes. This board didn't see this until August of 2016. I'm looking at a letter that says that there was a site that to see the flooding on February 7, 2017. It wouldn't have taken three months to see When did, can, can maybe somebody help me out here? When did the recharge system, when was it put in? So go ahead. Well, the recharge system was installed and inspected by what Boston Water saw um, August, uh, excuse me, October um, 16, 2016. It wasn't, the roof drains um, were not hooked up to the recharge system until February 1st of 2017. So it wasn't operational okay. at the time of the flood. So, the, so it was completely operational in, in February. February of 20, two, February, 7, February 17, 2017. And this issue of the flooding occurred in the fall of 2016 before installation and before, before well, while during installation of the recharge system. Is that correct? That, that's correct. That is correct. The, the system was not connected up. In other words, none of the water, when it, when it rained, when there was a significant rain event in October of 2016 when the flood, when the flood was alleged to occur. Do, do you agree with his uh, timing that the flooding happened in the fall of 2016? It was uh, October 21st of 2016. Thank you. We've not been allowed to inspect the property, but that's sort of another issue. So, but the timing of it, October, mid-October of 2016, we've got the water records, if you will, or the rain, rainfall records from that date all the way to the present. There have been many other 
events uh, since so that. Have been, well, so there have been, other there been many other events that uh, have, have met or exceeded that, and there have been no other flooding that's been reporting to, reported to us yeah, we've had, uh, as a result of it. Yeah, right. we've had um, probably 15 um, uh, strong some events, three of them probably equivalent to the one October 21st, and, you know, we are unaware of any flooding since, you know, the system was soaked up in February And has there been flooding? Has there been flooding the since year, October? So the unit has not been flooded, but I just want to point one thing out. They did have access to the property. All of their engineers, and this is No, no, listen, oh, I, I, I just want to kind of <laughs> focus on facts because, <laughs> you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a big drama person. So I'm just trying to focus on facts. So this is, this is the, 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 the information in the package that talks about the flooding and, and do you have a copy of this? Uh, um, which, which report is that in? Um, is that in your that's the well data? So this is that from the geotechnical report? No. So which, which so report is that in? It's, uh, this is right here from the. Uh, oh, so what was it submitted? So this is yeah. the McPhail oh, right report. Now just got okay. So um, so tell us what this this shows us. So tell us tell us October. Show us October twenty right. first, twenty sixteen. Right. What the what the impact so is? That data is the well data from the Groundwater Trust, which is available on their website, which shows historic levels that they've monitored. There's two wells nearby, one at the corner of Marlboro and Fairfield, and the another well at the corner of Fairfield and Public Alley, uh, 417. And what it shows at the time in October of 2016 that the groundwater elevation was approximately between four and 4.5 in elevation. Okay. And that's when the flooding occurred. Okay, so tell us subsequent about other highs. High, what, what was the highest that you observed at, at either one of these spots? Well, the most recent data, which would be April um, 22nd or 23rd of this year, is 6.37. That's the high, it's highest it's been probably in the last uh, three or four years. Sorry, 6.37? Yes, that's, that's data that was just taken um, from well number 2014. Uh, there's also a, a data from well 2041, which is 6.49. Okay. Okay. On this, um, the, the data that they're referencing is um, uh, from our website under our monitoring well page, and that is our data logger. Um, information for that area. So we data logged those three wells in that area for the purpose of monitoring a repair that was made by water and sewer in November of 2017. And you can see a massive spike around that time, right, before, right about the week before Thanksgiving. There was a leaking sewer in the area. Water and sewer fixed the sewer, groundwater levels came up two to now, in some cases, three plus feet over a period of about six months. So that's the cause ultimately for that rapid jump. And now we're starting to see essentially a spread out effect about a block in either direction. So in referring to the highest levels ever, that was really the main driver of that big jump in groundwater levels in that area. Um, I'm, so I'm just trying to get uh, the timeline clear. October 21st, 2016 is when you said the flooding happened in 2007. At that time, the groundwater recharge system was installed but not connected it was installed but not connected correct good it was installed and connected in february 2017 beginning of february 2017 okay. and you did a site visit on february 7th no i who did, who, who did the site visit Cal calcante engineer that's your yeah. your yes, engineer he did the site visit 277 the basement there okay and at that point it was connected after okay. February 1st. Okay, but so here is my question, the $60,000 question. From the February date in which it was connected, has there been any flooding between that date and today in 277? We haven't been flooding well, no, yet. Yes or no? I'll come again. Has there been flooding in 277 between February of 2017 and today? Not that I know of. So, is it wrong to assume that the problem was related to so, the lack of connect connectivity? I'd like to have the time. So, so, so hold on. This is, this is not a discussion. Let me just, okay? So you've put your testimony on the record. You've put your testimony. Are you, are you 
are you comfortable with the testimony you've put on the record, or would you like to add any more? I just want to add one other thing. Um, so I, I have a copy of the geofactor report that their um, engineer did. And I met with their engineers, both engineers. I met with Niche, and I met with McPhail and Associates here. And I want to make sure uh, it's, it's in Harvey's letter, but I want to make sure it's uh, articulated. Niche represented to Boston Water and Sewer that McPhail Associates um, did a geotechnical report. And they said, does not anticipate any impacts of adjacent properties. McPhail Associates denies he did that. He, he will not take ownership. They were shocked when I met with Niche and Harry, Harry from McPhail Associates at the property that the carriage house had a lower level. Because everything worked great if there was no lower level of carriage house, because you have plenty of area for this water to go all over the place. But unfortunately, we have bedrooms at lower level. So this will flood again. If if the city sewer surges, it, you know, it's gonna happen again. I mean, you know, it happens in the city over time. And if you're familiar with just a sanitary sewer old flood, so it's called technical. You know, so so, uh, so hold on. Okay, so that that your last piece of information that you want to put on the record is summarize one sentence, please. See, the fact is that um, Niche represented the Boston Water and Sewer. This is Niche, the engineer and director for the project. That McPhail Associates does not anticipate any impacts of adjacent property. McPhail Associates, okay. I talked to him. He denied. He said I didn't do any okay. reports regarding that stuff. So okay. Boston Water and Sewer approved this thing based on a, you know, false information. And I, I think we have some issues here because so, it's the proximity to the property line. So, so what I'm what I'm getting is that we have two two groundwater technicians uh, who have looked at this. We have water and sewer who has approved it. We have groundwater trust who, who, who concurs that all the above works. And then, uh, and then we have an engineer who, 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 is, who is in opposition in their opinion to, to the other two groundwater engineers. Okay, so thank you. So I think just like a regular hearing, we've heard the proponent um, on, the, on the property. We've heard the abutters' concerns. Um, and I think now it's time for us to make a decision. Or time for the board to, no, all done. Okay. All done. Uh, may I have a motion, please? I would make a motion that the, uh, the board's decision to approve the um, groundwater recharge system was correct. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The meeting is now adjourned. Uh, what about Sanford? I'm sorry? What about Sanford that we... Uh, denied without prejudice. No, they were no show. <laughs> um, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.